has had a long, or there was a long conversation about it uh, on the show just prior to oh, you and great. Josh yeah. and Zabe uh, and Wolfie and company out in left field. We were just talking about the energy in the crowd, the energy at dugout 54 when we were broadcasting yesterday. That was lit at dugout 54. The energy it there only was got good. better yeah. throughout the time uh, at dugout 54 yesterday. And then you get into the ballpark and rinse and repeat. The Brewers just might never lose. Never again. No, they're never going to lose again. One no. more day. Armin Sarian is able to post. Yes. The picture 162 and oh, yeah, it's still a dream. One of my favorite screen grabs from the 87 Brewers yearbook. Amazing. Magic, miracles and true believers. The true story of the 1987 Milwaukee Brewers brought to you by Miller light. Actually true believers, you know, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get to your other time. I'm yes. going to get to what you said, yeah. but really quick, the most underrated part of that. Uh, it's on YouTube, by the way, the 87 Brewers team mm -hmm. yearbook is the awesome Great job Jim Gander did with that with that forest fire promo at the beginning of it. It's like a long forest fire, Smokey the Bear promo. And only you are can prevent fire forest fires. Great job, Jim. Okay. Great job, Gumby, on that PSA. I'm gonna be checking that out today. I'm gonna so, download that for the plane. So anyway, the Brewers might not ne never lose again. Great. Love it. Will will it excite fans? I hope it does. It probably should, but you know, you do get the feeling. Now, the crowd was good that was in there yesterday. Mm -hmm. Energy, a single felt like uh, the World yep. Series. Like, everyone was excited for baseball to return. But I was a little disappointed to see a couple empty seats in there yesterday. Sure. I was a little disappointed. And I don't want it to be... I don't want this to be where we're where we're you know sitting around saying, well, what what, what, what about the playoffs? This isn't the end. We're not doing that this year. We're not doing that, Brewer fans. All right, we got to appreciate good players, appreciate good teams, appreciate wins when we get them. Because tell me if I'm wrong, Billy. Almost everyone rolled up here with their predictions of you know 82 wins, 80 wins, 83, 78. You know what was the bet? What's the over under? Right. So don't, so don't tell me you're not excited about a four and zero start. Now I don't know if they're going to win the World Series this year, Billy. I, they might. But I don't know if they're gonna. But I'm I'm gonna appreciate a four and I'll start and be excited about it. Why yeah. not? We're nine away from eighty seven right now, so let's go. You well, know? and more importantly, we're eight away from burgers. Eight away right? from like, burgers. Like I mean, you yeah. you do have to keep benchmarks there. And you say it, they could win the World Series. You know what? They also could end up winning seventy one games. Sure, right? Like it could that's happen. that's the best part about the blank canvas that is, uh, in my estimation, my opinion, the baseball season. We're, we're gonna learn so much more about Oliver Dunn, who right now. Looks like one of everyone's favorite hobbits turned major league third baseman <laughs> without playing a game at triple a. All I know is he made balling that. on a budget, loving it up he, in his first couple of games in the major leagues. He is. All I know is he made that play down the line. I haven't seen him yeah. hit a ball softly. And he was, and he was one of those guys that everyone was like, you know, I think people are educated in this fan base. You said that, what's an Oliver Dunn? They when know they, I, they, I thought yeah. it, I thought it was somebody from like the Adams family right. that was brought on in. Right. Like most of our guys, we know where they're from. We know what trade it's they amazing. came. amazing. But like Oliver Dunn is like, did he just, did he come through the system? Did he get called up? Like Mitchell Friedman? Did they get That's him from the KBO reference. or yeah. what? But hey, maybe. But all I know is he was hitting balls hard and snagging snagging lasers awesome. at third yesterday. That was a lot of fun. And Jake Bowers, if you missed when he came over from the New York Yankees, What's guess up, what? Jake you Bowers? probably did. Yeah, you probably he... did because you thought, wait, they couldn't Jack Bauer? Yeah. Used to watch that guy on 24 on Fox. No. Jake Bowers, and he had some remarkable picks there yesterday. They are, they're going to be a, a scrappy is a word that a lot of people will use. They're, I think the biggest part of it for me is they're a team that is taking on the personality of their manager. That's and that cliche yeah. is made so many different times, but Murph is having as much fun as anybody can have. There is a clip that we can't play. Adam McCalvey. Let's go, Adam. Go Welcome ahead. back, Adam. Hey, glad to see Adam back, by the way. Good to see Adam back. I, I know they were excited. Appreciate the, that. You know, our boys up in the press box. We're no gonna, doubt about it. We're going to get to that, by the way. Yeah, we got to we got to get into that. There, there's everything that goes around sure. in the pageantry of opening day. Yeah, but for people that didn't know, and it didn't get missed by us. No, it didn't. But but Adam had a, a health issue, and and was going to be out for so if people forgot that didn't yeah. know it missed a, all of spring training, it, didn't necessarily know when we were going to get Adam back at the ballpark. Super, but he was there yesterday. Super nice guy, one of those guys that everyone loves having around. And everyone was happy. I know this is a little inside baseball media mm -hmm. stuff. Sure. But it's important for people to know, like, people were very happy to have him back. Listen, right? Adam McCalvey has covered the Brewers for the last 25 years. He is. He is. So what, people have been yeah. reading Adam's stuff for two plus decades. And uh, he is he is the goods. Like, he is one of the nicest salt of the earth people that is in this business. Yeah, hardworking guy. Hardworking dude. Stuff, yeah. Absolute best. So, so him back. Yeah. 
Everybody's happy about it. Adam, you get the first question. Yeah. Ask him about the vibe coming through. I can't play the audio because Murph then craps all over him. Right away, welcomes him back in with, that's your question? That's the first question he got back. In the post game, he sees, looks at him and goes, Adam, listen, I don't know if you've been following us, but you know this is kind of what we've been doing. Jeez Louise. So, and, Keep the dagger in the pocket, Murph. But he is out here having fun, enjoying every minute of it. Seems like the guys that don't know if they will be on a major league roster. And there's 12 dudes that broke camp that made their first opening day roster on this 26 man roster. It really did play in that way going right. forward. It didn't feel like a whole like major league, the movie when they, these guys don't know the roster mm -hmm. and ever they're sitting around these guys have never had a, they're prime. sitting around the bar saying who's Mitchell Friedman. Like, I love that. I love that line. That's a, any, any major league fan knows that mm -hmm. line, Mitchell Friedman. Like that's the funniest line, but it did have that feel to it a little bit. Like there's a lot of new faces, a lot of new names, but you know, obviously you never know how they can come together, but uh, yeah, it did have that feel to it a little bit. And we're going to get to know these guys, get to know a new team, and we're getting to know them right now on a 4 0 start. Yeah, yeah, and we're also getting to know that guy that hits now in the three hole, plays out in left field. You were staring at his backside out there, out of the barrel yard for yeah. the entire time. By the way, he's a, you know, when he's when you're Christian up close, back. he's a, he's a, he, uh, he is back a little. I mean, he's not back a little bit. It looks like this guy has ready to hit right away here in, a, in April, mm -hmm. which you got to love. You got to be excited. And the reason I'm stumbling over my words here a little bit is you've got to be excited at the potential of having that Christian Yelich back. Yeah, and no know, doubt about it. I know we talked about how with a young team and some a very impressionable young just, team just, and have an MVP like guy. Just to have a stalwart, a kind of a guy like that who's always even keel. We know he's got cachet amongst younger players, cachet in this league, and he's just there. He's just that dude that's a ball player, right? And Yelich is starting to hit here early in the season. We don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, I know, but mm -hmm. it sure is exciting to see him go off again like this early. That's the Yelich we were used to, seeing him hit ropes, line drives, home runs. Just an absolute unit of a guy, too, when you're close to him. He you know? is, yeah, and that's something that you can only appreciate, Armin, when you're when you're somewhere near him and you yeah. get it at, like, an eye level. Absolutely. He is a, he is a large individual. Right. Also looking a little bit larger when Sal Freilich is playing in center field next to him. Oh, However... Yeah. Not many guys I'm looking up at, and I'm looking up at Christian Yelich and feeling a little intimidated. So he's a he's a large guy, and and he announces his presence yesterday, bangs one off that brand new uh, batter's eye scoreboard yep. up there. The scoreboards look great, looking great. Um, I want to know how everybody else took in the game yesterday and what were their biggest because Dano the Mano hits it right on the head. He's got at, it. He's got uh, it. Nine oh nine. Yeah. The moment of the game was the Bob Euchre standing ovation. Oh my gosh. Well, and they, the whole place uh, bursting out into the uke chant, him bowing down to the crowd. That was so good. And, and he's saying, you can read his uh, lips when he's saying, thank you, thank you, and tapping his chest. Oh, it's like, amazing. That was one of the great moments in any bar uh, ballpark you'll ever see this whole week, this whole year. I mean, it was so electric when that happened. You get instantly emotional to see it, to see Bob looking great, by the way. I mean, from the from the from what we could tell, yeah, from our view, you know, good, yeah. looking great and looking energetic, excited, and you know, you get us the sense that a whole community understands the importance of that moment, understands the importance of this man, Fair. what he means to us, what he means to everybody, and the chance to say we're going to appreciate this moment right here. Say thank oh, you right man, now. Oh man, that was cool. Let him know we appreciate him, and you know, Bob knows that, but. That was so cool. That was just, it was a, it was a great day for a lot of reasons. That might've been the best. That reason. was maybe the best moment. And it just, it gave everybody uh, that quick reminder of, okay, we, our guy's still here. He's still here. He's what still this? here. And he's still our focal point. He's still our fixture. 54 opening days. In and, and still having fun. I mean, he was for that minute. Having four a, of them. He was having a good oh, yeah, time. He was having a good time. So that, you that, know, he was ripping jokes back there in the press box. He was having himself a grand old time. Ken Summerfell was not ca was catching plenty of strays there on the broadcast. Plenty. Always does. Oh, that's the best. It's just the best. It was just so awesome to see that. Mark and, goes, uh, how could Armin yeah. how could Armin read his lips? He was crying his eyes out. I was very emotional in that moment. The tears started welling up. I I, I almost think to myself, oh, it's, do you feel silly saying that? But I don't see why I should. 
No, you shouldn't. Uh, I mean, no. that was because it was sort of an unexpected moment. Didn't know they were going to put him on the scoreboard. Didn't know that they were going to do that. And yeah, when they did. It was it, well done by the people at AmFam Field. I mean, when you saw him and you heard the crowd and you realized what was happening and you saw him react and say thank you to everybody, it's like, you know, that moment when you when you were in totality, the moment when you take it in totality, it was just kind of overwhelming for a second. For a quick second, I was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> it also is. did feel like they were urging fans to say thank you to Bob Uecker for all the moments that he has sure. uh that he has soundtracked. And it was it was just a really, really great time. It was a great moment. It was a great day at AmFam. Now, granted, um, I know you mentioned it. You, you did say there were a few empty seats, a few more than I would have anticipated at opening days. However, I think a lot of that does have to do with the fact that, uh, as mailman Jeff said, it was 37 and snowing and raining yesterday. I think, I think a lot has to do with the weather. I keep saying that. When it's it. 70 degrees, it is easier for people to make day of rash decision, yeah. cutting out of work, going and grabbing a grill and a couple of cold ones and sitting in the parking lot and going into the game. Well, because Josh had me, you know, going with him. And when you run opening day with Josh, it's like, we got to go here. We got to go Piper. here. Yes. We were like, we were like, you have an itinerary. We were under a tent, Billy, with soaking wet feet for like an hour and a half. And I'll be honest with you, that was, we were getting close to the point where I, there's the least I've ever had fun at a ballpark in that moment. Now, this is before we got into the game. When we got into the game, into the stadium, it was totally comfortable. But I'm out there with Josh, and I'm like, Josh, I don't want to be out in this driving rainstorm anymore. I know we had the poncho. I know I've got the, you know. I'm trying to I, get inside and get warm. Yeah, we, you know, no. <laughs> so it was like, Armin, stop complaining, stop complaining. And I get it. All right. I didn't want to be a party pooper, but I was like, Josh. I'm just going through it a little bit. I'm getting older, but I did have these are almost 40. I did have the jello shots. I had the cookie dough whiskey shot, whatever they were giving Ooh, me. Okay. So, so, you know, you got, I was, I was rolling a little bit. I didn't have Damn, sorry. And was ripping shots well, yesterday. I, I did. I did. I was, I was, it, I was in the moment. All right. Oh, I was damn. Like, Armin, stay in the moment, get in the moment. It's the vibe. It's the flow state. I didn't know the vibes were like that. They were, but I wanted to get inside Billy. It was miserable weather. <laughs> It was inside totally, so <laughs> totally miserable. However, when we got inside, it was it was nice. And th and, and I, t I said to myself, there is absolutely no reason in the world why there shouldn't be a roof on all these things. So I and said, Billy, one. you yeah, got a good point. About... You got a good point. And, and... I was getting a little annoyed with Josh because I was like, Josh, we got to get inside right now. Well, we got to wait for Zabe. Well, we got to go see my buddy so-and-so. And we're, we're going to go play this game. We're going to have this shot with this guy. I was like, okay, fine. Can we go inside, please? At like, some point, though, you yeah. need to stand up for yourself, Armin. Yeah. You got to say, I'm a grown man. I'm almost 40. <sighs> I am. I was. And I'm cold. I'm going inside. I do not want to be the guy that anyone ever once said wasn't, you know, like, enjoy the moment, though. Wasn't in for the moment. Weren't like, in for the moment. Committed to the Wasn't bit. committed to the cause, especially yeah. on opening day. Well, maybe once you turn 45, that, that, okay. that'll be the time that you start saying, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to get these toes warm. Oh because I imagine there were plenty of cold toes yesterday. That was the one. That was the thing. You stepped into one of them puddles walking on in from so the preferred of the general lot or just saying, forget about it. I'm not waiting for this shuttle. I'm walking from dugout 54, walking from Kelly's, walking straight right. on in. You know you were stepping in some stuff. So wet. But you know what? I could have worn boots. That was yeah, on me. Could've, yeah. I could have thought ahead. That was on me. So I guess I had no one to blame but myself uh, in that situation. But you did mention parking. That was a little bit of an issue yesterday. Parking was a yeah. little bit of an issue. Okay. Getting, it was a little getting, interesting. We're getting the kinks worked out. We're everybody. figuring it out. Um, the, the free flowing traffic was not as free flowing in as uh, I, I think it was predicted to be. But then again, hand raised in air. Your man went home yesterday after yeah. dug out 54. Man, yeah. Caught a couple of minutes of nap, you know, maybe woke the little guy up okay. from a nap. Yeah. A little hot chocolate, you know, warmed up a little bit. Oh, so bit. you had a nice little day afternoon there. Yeah, I drove I drove on in, right? Yeah, and yeah. I drove on in for the game. <laughs> so I was a little I was a little behind schedule, made it for first pitch. We got into the parking lot about a half hour before the game. And uh, it was far from free flowing. It was at that. But it was at that particular point in time that I think the parking attendant said, uh, "Hey, man, palms up." I don't know what we can do. So you got free parking yesterday. I don't know what we're. I don't know what we're gonna do. So I think. I think most people got free parking. They put out a uh, notification yesterday. Uh, Brewers did that. They were not going to hand out any tickets. I don't believe that's going to be the uh, case here today. I think they got most of the issues worked out. I was able to put in my uh, license plate later on in the game. So maybe they're not giving out parking tickets. Maybe they are. 
Maybe somebody's going to walk back today and say, that son of a gun on the game told me that I wasn't going to get a parking ticket. Right, right, Here, right. I have a $38 ticket that I have to pay. Not saying you're not going to get one. You right. didn't we, we can't promise anything. But can't promise, so quit o- asking. Overall, it was a banger of an opening day for many reasons, not the least of which, obviously, the win. But I think mostly because the vibes are having this Brewers team right now. They're playing well. They're winning games. And I just don't want anyone to take it for granted. We've been doing that in the last few years a little bit, in my opinion, because of the struggles in the playoffs. And, you know, overall, people are would tell you that sometimes the vibes aren't high around this team for one reason or another. They still talk about the hater trade. Oh, yeah. Council leaving. Always will. There's a lot to have for fun sure. with. There's a lot to love about this team. All right. This isn't the 94 Brewers. All right. It may Matt Miski out there. So let's just let's just be excited no. about what we have in the moment here. Okay. It's I I do believe that this team is going to make more fans of people throughout the year. Yeah. I think this team is going to bring more people from the fan base a little bit more back might be the wrong way to put it. I think they're going to bring some guys back though. I think they're going to bring some fans back the way that they play. I hope so. The energy they play with. I hope so. And anybody that was rocking a Bryce Terang zero Jersey yes. feels pretty good. The Bryce Terang two Jersey. I mean, Pat Murphy was uh, spiking the football saying, did I not tell you guys he was going to be a better hitter? We're all here for the Bryce Terang development tour. Did I not tell you he was going to be a better he hitter? He did say it. Yeah. He had the big old knob on the bottom of the bat yesterday. Who's swinging with this? Drops in a little RBI single, a little flare shot. And uh, oh, the oh, by the way, department, who drives one in? Our boy Jackson. Cheerio. We didn't even talk about that yet. Didn't even talk about that, it. That was probably one of the more electric moments as well. I mean, th- did this... you allow yourself to go there when he stepped up into the box? Oh, yes. I to went think all that the way. ball was going 420 well, feet. Well, I went all the way there. That was the first uh, get out of your seat moment for everybody. Pay it attention. Was. Like, oh boy, here's the kid. Let's yes. go. Stage was set, bases loaded. And yeah, Grand Slam would have been great. I, I'll tell you what, I'm taking an RBI single every time, Billy. That was awesome. Love seeing that. Love seeing him. Calm, cool, collective. Just poke one right in the center and come through. Gloves off, no big deal. Gloves off, high five. First so don't base, even worry about boom, it. Boom, no problem. I, I mean, it was, that, that was a great moment as well. How about, you know, Abner's stretch at first for the out and double. So there were so many good moments in that opening day yesterday. So many good vibes. I know we got a lot of texts coming in. We're going to get everyone's Tons. stories. Yes. We want opening day stories, opening day reaction. We'll, we'll get them as well on the talk version of the talk and text line. 414-799-1973. If you'd prefer to say and tell your story instead of type it on in, we're going to hear from Matt Schneiman. He's going to talk some Green Bay Packers with us at 10 o'clock. We're going to talk some bucks with Trey Crosby. And that's not going to be fun. Uh, as much fun as it was well, at the stadium not. yesterday, you got home just in time to watch the Milwaukee Bucks lose to the Washington Wizards. Yes, those Washington Wizards, um, the ones that sport three Wisconsin products in Jordan Poole, Johnny Davis, and Patrick Baldwin. And uh, it was Corey Kispert. What? Kispert? What? With 27? I don't know what happened. There. It was It was. It was all sorts of weird. It was all sorts of funky. And Trey was going... Ham sandwich online last night. So we're going to get into that coming up with Trey Crosby uh, in the third hour of the program here today. You're at 414-799-1973. And uh, Matt LaFleur is going to make an appearance here today on the radio program because he was on a podcast and uh, had some very, very interesting statements about the offseason that the Green Bay Packers have had. Had a couple of good ones about Jordan Love. But the Aaron Jones conversations had people still talking and turning and wondering, How do you not know? How does this guy not know? We'll answer that question as well. Your opening day stories and more of it next for the 4-0 crew on 9 to Noon with Armin Ansarian and Billy Schmidt. Sorry, Billy. Did I say Armin and Sarian? You're good. That's Did I say Armin and Sarian? That's the name of my new LLC. I love it. That's (laughs) Armin and Sarian LLC. I'm Billy Schmidt. We're back right after this statewide on the game.
This is my niece's son. Tell him your name. Rory. Rory. Who's your favorite player? Selfie. Who are you for Halloween? Selfie. What's your dog's name? Sal. <laughs> I think we got a clear favorite player for you Rory. You think? Niece's son of Brewers manager Pat Murphy. Who, What's uh, your dog's name? Sal. 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 I heard that yesterday on the post game. The barrister asked Hilarious. me, please play Murph, his, Murph's son, grandson, about his it, favorite player. He says his, his niece's son, right? Niece's son. So he's his grandnephew, I guess. You know, I okay. have a great uncle. Yeah, yeah that he, makes sense. Your, your yeah. uncle's dad. Yeah, great uncle. Yeah. More than anything, awesome. Pat Murphy's got to be an awesome grandpa. Oh, he was, like, That would be an awesome granddad I think, to have. I think I didn't know Pat in his younger years. You know, obviously, we know him mm. now as the Brewers, but like, the way he is, like with the dry sense of humor, oh, but you, you can tell there's a soft side to him. Oh but yeah. The, but the grizzly guy, when it comes to baseball, he's like kind of a grizzly hardened. Like mm -hmm. he gives you the straight answers, the joke about not high fiving guys, like no drama type of guy. I mean, yesterday when he was on with Zabin's show, it was great, but he's like, I don't think about what the fans expect. I, don't think about it, I just think about getting wins. But I, I just feel like he was born to be a grandpa. Eventually, very true in that yes. sense, or to be like funny uncle or funny grandpa mm -hmm. in that in that sense where he's not a goofball, but he's gonna just be that hilarious type guy where he's just giving hilariously you that, that consistent dead, that deadpan like funny. Yeah, but he's probably the guy that you know straight faced. And the, and the, the boys come by and he goes. Next thing you know, he's doing the whole thing where his thumbs go on. You know, one of those tricks, like little tricks like that. He's just hilarious, deadpan. man. He's, just, he's like absolutely got to be the most electric grandpa. You just know he's got tricks up his sleeve, yeah. always does. And you talk about the dry sense of humor. Oh, he so can, good. He can deadpan with the best of them. Like it is, it's going to be a very, very fun year to listen along to not only Timmy and Pipe Bomb on the postgame show, just because uh, of the reaction night in and night out. Tim right. was so happy. Yesterday. He's so excited. Oh, but, I was so happy yesterday. It but, made me so fired up as I was sitting in uh pretty stand still traffic on the way on out of AmFam Field. It was packed, it was packed yep, on up. Yep. 41,000 there yesterday as Andrew uh, in Franklin on the talking text line said, damn, I thought it was actually pretty full. We were in standing room for the most, most of the time. And it seemed pretty packed on the concourse all day long. It was, I mean, there were, 41,000 people. It was an opening day. Don't get us wrong. It was Don't packed. get us twisted on it, it that. Was it was there. an opening day. I think we were just surprised. You know, it's not always where there's tickets available, right, that day, right? That was the biggest thing. And, and I did kind of self-correct myself on the, well, there's empty seats. Well, it is also opening day, that right? So sold. concourse yeah, yeah. is going to be buzzing because people are going to be walking, walking into around. each other, walking around, going to the team store, stopping and grabbing a beverage. Beverage lines are going to be long. And it's also... It's a holiday. It's go and see a couple of your buddies walk over by one fourteen and meet on up. So like that is that is a massive part of it. And it it's just more of a strange and an oddity for me and Armin. I won't speak for you, but yeah. I, I think you're somewhat alike growing up. This was a game and a day that you had to have tickets for weeks in advance. Well, we grew up like Post County Stadium. Post County like Stadium. County Stadium, it wasn't necessarily like that. Not the same. Weather. Right. Weather was very uh, hit or miss. You, you know, didn't necessarily know what it was going to be. Maybe not 0203, but once once the 0405 weeks fielder hardy, once all that happened. Oh, once they got uh, once they got better, owner that cared about winning? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't Once think. they got an owner that brought winning in, is that a Wendy shot or a Bud shot? Is that a Wendy stray for Wendy Steele Preeb? I think that's Wendy. not not meant to be a shot oh, towards okay. them. Meant to be a Reality? shot at people that believe that he is not caring oh, gotcha. about winning. Gotcha. Yes. No. Obviously. Or that they need to, to get an owner that needs to come on in here and and care about winning. Well, he, he fourth winning his team in the National League under are, his ownership. They are. Yes. And he obviously wants to win. He knows how important it is. But yeah, I mean, once that started happening, it became the whole. We need to get opening day tickets, so you have to buy a ticket package. Like that was the big draw. Gotta get it a ten. So pack. hard to get tickets. Yep. It was like, who are you getting tickets from? Gotta I'll go be... to the Arctic tailgate it to try to get some tickets. It was hard to get opening day tickets. You had to pay the aftermarket. That whole thing. So yeah, I mean, it, that's why I think it surprised us a bit. I still think maybe of the weather, you know, because there's still a trip. Weather in did this. some of it. Yeah, no uh, doubt about uh, it. But I know what you mean. Maybe there's a little bit more to it, right? The whole fan feeling around it. like Yeah, for sure. There's some fan feeling deal with it. We talked about it yesterday that people are still, uh, you know, I think dipping their toes in the water of Brewers baseball, right? They say, who are some of these guys? I, I don't have, I have a Corbin Burns jersey I bought two years ago, and now he's not there, so I'm not going to wear that, right? Like, Woodruff's not even pitching. Like, 
what is this? What's a yeah. DL Hall? Like we're down low on the Hall? No, it, that's uh, a guy that you got for Corbin Burns. So right. there's going to be a little bit of learning the team and and learning your favorite players again, yeah. and, and finding but, new guys because you do you are going to find some new faces. I think, and right, wrong, or indifferent, people have their own you know thoughts with it. I think the parking had something to do with maybe, it. Maybe, maybe. I don't think people were thrilled with that. I think people were are still trying to say, you know, you got to prove to me as to why I should come on out and and do it. Now, the parking, uh, as our friend Ryan and Tosa has said, the the Brewers did say that they will be uh, reverting to our parking system that previously existed at the ballpark, yeah. uh, at least for today. They for today's to, game, I don't think they want today's to, game. They don't want to lose a whole set of parking gate again. I don't think that's my theory, Billy. You're right, but just for today, glad just you for care, April third's game, cashiers will be scanning prepaid passes and accepting day of game payment upon arrival. Please disregard the information uh, in your no before the game email that you already got, sure, sure, or any previous communication and, regarding parking. And, that is urgent news for today's game. And Billy, I get it. There's going to be a group of fans that are weary of any change as to uh like you know a theory of how the team's going to take more money from you right anytime there's a change like that sometimes fan there are fans that will go there i mean it's like the whole the group of fans that still are upset they 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 can't use cash at the stadium right sure they want to go cashly they should have that option and i think there's a point to be made there i absolutely do do. yeah um and i'm sure there's a lot of fans that look at this as another chapter of that well this is just a way to get more fees from me i don't want to use it i want to use cash I understand, but I, I I do think there was also an aspect of it where they thought this was going to help get people in the stadium quicker, make it easier for everybody, streamline the experience. Obviously, they're working kinks out, but I get it. I get it. There's always going to be fans that are resistant to that. Just like our, our guy, you know, 262, unnamed on the text line saying, when are you going to mention our one for 13 leadoff hitter? Yeah, there is one or two negative things all the time. Oh, for not, sure. Yes. Not everyone's going to be hitting a thousand to start the year. Sal, when we did mention Sal, there you go. There we okay. go. Yeah. We got Sal. In Rory there. mentioned Sal. We did. Roy mentioned it and Murph talked about it. You're right. Like Sal's the one guy that hasn't hit yet. So there, there is that part of it right away. There's that aspect of fans of some fans that want to want to find that, you know, well, wait a minute. What about this? And I'm unhappy mm-hmm. about this. Hey, fair enough. Everyone's got their way. They're going to feel and that's okay. You know, so that might've had a little effect too on the attendance. Uh, well, the perceived attendance yesterday, Billy. Yeah. yeah and, and I do, I, I think it had something to do with it. We also had more people uh, throughout the talking text line, like Todd in new Orleans said, Hey man, I'm in Louisiana. So this is how I watched opening day in Milwaukee with a nice bucket of Miller lights, iced up in front of him yeah, at man. a bar, 80 degree day. And uh, he was soaking it in there. I think there were many people that were soaking it in at home. And uh, like Janie and Appleton said, I was watching on TV while this surreal landscape was going outside. Weird opening day when you're getting hammered with like 15 inches of snow, like they did in Appleton. It was, it was crazy to sort of see the Good juxtaposition, God. but it also made me thankful that we had this moment. Ah, uh, that's fair. I mean, yeah, we might've been fair. sitting around not being able to play for a week. And yeah, is the idea that there's snow outside and opening day kind of kind of ironic and funny? Yeah, maybe. It's also kind of pretty cool that we can have that moment where I knew what was happening outside because I just walked through it for an hour. Yeah. But once we got inside, it was summertime. I mean, really, it felt that way. It felt pretty nice in there. So we all had a good time today. I loved it. Billy, a couple of people also asking Tim and the Shaw and some more how we felt about the new scoreboard. I thought it was nice. It didn't blow me away in terms of distraction that I thought it might be. It okay. Just, it just looked nice and new. Yeah. You know, it it's nice massive. And it's big, but the actual footprint of the of the dimensions aren't any different, right? Any bigger? No. It's because the ads around it are digital now, in which they weren't. The only I, time that I recognized it or realized it, to be honest with you, was when um, they would flash like a walk or a ball. They would take the ads off, wipe it, you know, take it, wipe it clean, wipe it clean. And it was the whole, and it would be clean. So like that was once that was when I recognized it a couple of times. And then the scoreboard in right field, that's the one that's interesting. Yeah. Snuck up on me because now I was, uh, I was in the, the third level in the club level. And from where I was kind of standing before until I walked up towards the seats, um, and, and walked, you know, down the couple of steps towards where the seats were uh, in the area. I didn't see it. And then I looked over. Oh, geez. 
That thing's massive. Massive. Yeah, it's, also it's comes up with yeah. fantastic information. It's a lot of stats and analytics that I don't think people would have even expected to think about. Did I think about. I wanted to know what the pitch sequence was right. of the at-bat? They had the whole pitch sequence. I didn't think about it, but yeah. I liked it. But it's kind of cool knowing it, right? It was nice knowing yeah. and being able to see, oh, damn, Elvis Peguero's sinker's nine miles miles an hour faster yeah. or slower than his fastball. Like you, you were able to see a lot more information and whether you like it or not, or care about it, or it did anything for you. I enjoyed it. So like that part to me was, uh, it was, it was bright though. The ring board, definitely the new ring board that they did around the second level. Especially what was that green the ad with the green true green or whatever ad that Something is. like that. It's yeah. Bright green. I yeah. was not a big fan of at one particular point in time, the board in right field. I did snap a picture just because, you know, I thought it was funny. Yeah. They had a travel Minnesota advertisement on yeah, there. I don't know what that's about. I mean, I know you got to get your ad. I know you got to get sales. <laughs> I know we're trying to move numbers here. I got like 80 out of the 82 games. That one should appear, but you know, it, hey, listen, it, it's it, going to happen. It is kind of funny. It's like, did Minnesota buy that? Uh, I'm catching the money whenever I can. If I'm the Brewers, so that, I'm, not, nah, I'm not mad at you them. You got to do what you got to do. But I'm not did, mad at them. I want to know more about that. Did Minnesota buy that thinking it was funny? By the way, yeah, I can't. I don't, I don't. I don't like Minnesota's uniforms. This is a random stray. Mm, don't like okay. those jerseys at all. Don't know why they switched up. They had a pretty good logo and jersey set going. Yeah, a little TC. Don't don't really understand why they needed to have this weird new M. Why they have red numbers with that weird font on a dark jersey? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know. It's a quick stray for me. I just wanted to. I'm just glad somebody's throwing more them. uniform talk for me. I guess. Um, did you think anything uh, differently about the jerseys yesterday, Billy? We talked about it yesterday. So I couldn't see. You had a better. You had. Yeah. A, you were a little closer. And you. You also got some screen time, recorded screen time. Yeah, we didn't actually get on the TV yesterday. I thought we were on TV. I really. I did. thought you were too. Yeah. The the TV that I was looking at had you guys up there for twenty five seconds in house or whatever. The in house feed had you guys on there the whole time. Well, I bring eyeballs. I bring numbers. I bring eyeballs. When they need ratings, they put armor on the big screen, I guess. Is that what what's they needed to, they needed to show you guys more then? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. I think Sushi uh, in the Falls also said, yeah. did you guys notice the ribbon boards on the top face of the dugouts? All right. Sushi? The top of the dugouts? A lot Yeah. I'm glad I I'm glad I, I wasn't I the only person. I don't think I did. Because there was something at AmFam Field yesterday I noticed for the first time. Okay. And it tripped me up a little bit. And Armin Sarian felt the same way. I wonder if our Nooners felt the same way when they first realized this at AmFam Field. We'll get into that uh, as well. It's 414-799-1973. We'll continue on. Uh, Match Diamond going to join us coming up at 10 o'clock. We're going to we're gonna play you some sound that was making the rounds online yesterday. Match, uh, Matt LaFleur, speaking about the most badass player he's ever coached. Maybe one guy that should be not mentioned at the particular point in time that he was, or maybe it just emphasizes as to, was he in on the decision? Mm. The running back conversation, very interesting up at 1265. Josh Jacobs in, Aaron Jones out, seemingly one man, very in on the conversations, one man on the outside looking in. We'll give you our takes on that coming on up. It's Armin Sarian, it's Billy Schmidt, it's nine to noon statewide. With you on the game until noon. Match Diamond here in 20 minutes. Underdog Fantasy, the place to be playing and get in on the NBA action. It's still going on in the regular season, and there's no easier way to get in on the action with Underdog Fantasy and their NBA Pick'em game. Hey, it's Billy Schmidt. It's a fantasy game where you can win real money. All you got to do is pick two to five players from at least two different teams. Select higher or lower on the player stats. And if your picks hit, you can win up to 100 times your money. It's legal in Wisconsin. It makes watching Bucks games tons more fun to play, even when they're catching a fat L to the Washington Wizards. It makes it even more fun to play because you could have a big 34 on an over or on a higher on some rebounds. You could also have a lower on a Kispert from the Washington team last night. That would have given you a fat L can also do this while you're watching the baseball team opening day. A lot more fun when you had a little bit of a higher or lower scorched props going on or the scorched stats were my favorite part for baseball yesterday as the Milwaukee Minnesota game throughout. We had some action enjoying on throughout the game. However, did not win, did not win. 
this time. Will, however, next time, and you always do with Underdog Fantasy, and if you have not played Underdog Fantasy, you start a winner. The app, super easy to use. You can also go to uh, underdogfantasy.com, but sign up with promo code Billy to start a winner. They'll match your first deposit up to 100 bucks, plus give you a mystery special pick to use on your first pick em entry. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Billy, to get your first deposit of 10 or more dollars up to 100 bucks matched, plus your special pick. Must be 18 plus present in a state where underdog fantasy operates terms do apply concerned with your play call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org.
Nine to noon on the game. Thanks for hanging out. Armin Sarian right there. I'm Billy Schmid. Uh, breaking news in the NBA, Armin. Uh, Steve Clifford is stepping down as the Hornets head coach at the end of the season, working to finalize a front office role. With um, them? Uh, I'm, yes, I believe so. Oh, so they're actually, it's not like a firing. So it doesn't sound like a full firing. Yeah. actually sounds like a stepping down, stepping up. More than anything, you had to step away if you were the head coach of the Charlotte Hornets oh, I this year. Say, like, I, I, I mean, there are a couple of teams where I think you can, job, you I mean. can clearly tell the guys are going to be moved on from or will be moving on for different roles. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets would absolutely be one of those teams. Yeah, one but the, if, 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 they, if they're giving him a front office role, they don't think he's the problem, apparently. Uh, right? No, no. The, the players I, that worked them to an 18 and 57 I think, record, I think, is the problem. I think that's the issue. That is know? the issue. Yeah. Yeah, they are bad. 18 and 57. Well, hey, this is this is a top heavy league this year. I've noticed at least Billy. three and a half games better than the Washington Wizards. Yeah, there, there have been. Why'd you bring that up? Trey's not for another 30 minutes, please. I'm I, just saying, OK, because we, we did have I know, I know. we, we had rough. a text here that I definitely wanted to get to because John A said, hey, man, when can we panic about the Bucks? The Wizards. Well, it was now, bad. It was bad. It well, was bad. But let me tell you something. It they, was bad. If they rolled up and won by 40, would you have thought they're championship bound? No. No. Th- that's fair. So so I I don't want to say we can take nothing from it. Nobody's happy about losing to the Wizards. I just don't think I don't know. I don't know how to I don't know how to deal with it. I don't want to say the Bucks don't care. They clearly care that they lost this game. They clearly don't Well, Doc lose. Rivers clearly cares. Yeah. Doc Rivers was talking about it after the game. Eric Name said the Bucks are now 18 and 20 on the road this season after this one and two road trip. And after the game, Doc Rivers was asked what he thinks the Bucks have done, uh, have been unable to do on the road that has led to their struggles. His response, I don't know. I think focus. I don't know what it is, though. You know, it's funny. I've actually been sitting back and watching everything. Mm. Not just our players, but our whole travel crew. Sorry, that's mean. But our whole travel crew, everything, and I've made a lot of notes. Taking notes over here, Armin. I will say that. I won't share that. But we don't bring the necessary professionalism, seriousness on the road. And that's something that we can fix. And that's something we are going to have to fix. So is he talking about the travel guys, the man, the the clubhouse, you know, the equipment guys, the man, you've been a ball boy. Now you've been a ball boy talking about the visiting luggage. This is the second time. This is the second time the, the laundry guys have caught astray. A little bit of a stray. He, yeah. First, it was Giannis that said, we got to do everything better. We got to play better. We got to coach better. We got to do our laundry better. You remember our that? laundry better. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's saying, I've been sitting back. What is he sitting back? Taking notes of the guys packing the truck. Let's see here. I don't know about uh, that's that. pretty inefficient. They don't yeah. like the way they pack the truck down. Listen, not everyone's got a red baddie. All right. Oh, no, no, that's no. fair. Is that what he's really talking about, Billy? As a former ball boy, like I, I don't know that he's talking about that. I do think he's talking about the entire operation on the road, though. Well, right, and crew, I mean that would they, that would include right the equipment team that probably would include the pilots, the pilots and everything, <laughs> the uh, you know, Dan Samee checking company and the PR staff, right? I mean, I, I guess I, everybody's I, under watch here. I don't know what he means by that. It was bizarre. It was like, are you talking about the guys that are like? Getting everyone checked into their hotel rooms and stuff like that. Everything, taking notes on everything. Wow, because it starts from the. It starts there. I always said when I was a manager in high school, it starts with me. Starts with me. How I mix this Gatorade. How do these guys get ready for the game? That's why I told myself. How am I preparing them for greatness? That's why I told myself when I was making that five five gallon bucket of Gatorade before the game. Right, stirring it up with a big old wood spoon. The mix better be right. You know what you have to know, Armin is. Success on the floor is tied to how good this is. Right. And if you didn't get Monte Ellis's car out of the garage or whatever you had to do. I really, didn't get his jacket on that 12 degree day. Who knows what was going to happen? <laughs> I think there's one piece of this that I think exactly the message Doc Rivers is trying to send us. Okay. Yeah. Remember I'm here next year. Uh, I like that. Yes. Things I, are going to be different. It Things are just gonna be different. sounds like to me, maybe pre- prepping the runways. Yeah. Letting everybody know this wasn't necessarily going to be a two months fix, two month fix. Right. The 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 goal and the reason why you fire Adrian Griffin in the middle of the season is because you want to still maximize the twenty four playoffs. Sure. Just sounds like to me, Doc's letting y'all know we're gonna have a whole new foundation. It's gonna be totally different twenty four twenty five. Yeah. Right. We're gonna we're gonna push. We're gonna do whatever we can to figure this out right now. It's gonna get fixed. 
And we're not eating lasagna on the road anymore. But it might get fixed next year. Yeah, next year might be the year. We so, might be getting Maggiano's so next this year is a soft, on the travel. This is like a soft launch into next year? Right. Yeah. Might be saying, hey, man, I, I know we're just using the stadium food for the cuisine I'm, for the guys going home. We're gonna need we're gonna need to bring on in some Capital Grill, right? We're gonna need to bring in Carnivore over here to help us yeah. on out on a day in and day out basis. Uh, it's, and that's it's how, interesting, and that's how you know you're bad when you're the Wizards. When one when one loss to you guys is gonna throw the we whole check operation. our whole operation. We're checking the whole. <laughs> we're checking the way we pack the plane. We're checking the laundry detergent we use. Yeah, you guys are not gonna be washing the colds with the whites with the hots anymore, and we're not using extra. That we're we're getting tied. We're Jew, uh, Jew in Milwaukee, I hate that excuse though. Like, don't worry, guys. We got next year. Like, no, we have to win it now. Not again. Not wait again until oh, next year. There's urgency. Uh, yes. No, I, I I get it. However, this was going to be a remarkably difficult fix while the plane's in the air. Yeah. I just I, I'm. But did I, did I'm I let you know that's just what I heard for or what I read from that statement is. We are going to do what we can to try to win this championship in 24. Right. Also, did everyone hang with us in 2025? Did, did everyone, that's when it did wakes everyone up. play last night? Did everyone play last night? Uh, no. Uh, this guy named Damian Lillard okay. did not play. All right. That's all. We got match time. And that's, that's Tyus all. Jones also didn't play on the other side, but you know we're going to leave that there. I don't Just think Tyus Jones is Damian Lillard. I understand Badger it's fans. like their second best player, but. Uh, yes, that's their second best player. Yeah. Yeah. The, I understand Badger fans remember Tyus Jones. I don't think he's. You know what? You're right. Didn't Don't play. worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's Arvin Sorry. And he's got jazz hands going. You can see the jazz hands here on nine to noon's YouTube page issues fixed from the second segment. Don't even worry about it. We did see you on the talking text line. You are going to be wanting to be on the YouTube stream or you can find us on X when match Nyman joins us next from the athletic and the match Nyman show on nine to noon right after this.
Nine to noon on the game statewide. Armin Sarian alongside. I'm Billy Schmidt. Thanks for hanging out this hour of the program brought to you by Happy Place Hemp and HappyPlaceHemp.com. So sit back and relax. And Josh Allen, if you're listening, you might need to relax here. Yeah, I think so. Just might need to relax. You might need to drift in with some THC, CBD infused citrus seltzers drift no alcohol no calories no problems helps you just drift into happiness they're cbn cbd gummies sleepy time gummies delta eight gummies which uh heading on to a plane later on here tonight Yeah, you were uh, flying tonight to, yeah. to phoenix yeah a couple of those potentially to help the boy maybe okay. fall asleep on that plane otherwise i might be being one of those five guys that buys the uh internet so i can watch a bunch of different sports and a bunch of mlb big inning Nice. I'm too cheap. Nice addition to MLB TV. Happy Place Hemp. HappyPlaceHemp.com. If you can't get over there to go and say hi to Rob and Chris, might be doing that later on this afternoon as well. Go to HappyPlaceHemp.com. Use promo code Billy. Get 25% off every time off your entire order at HappyPlaceHemp.com. Match Diamond joins the radio program now. Match Diamond show. You can listen to during football season right here on 97.3 The Game. Stars at the Athletic. You read his reporting, and he comes in with breaking news now that Stephon Diggs has been traded to the Houston Texans. Houston Texans are getting Diggs. Uh, the package includes draft compensation. Uh, before we get all the details of it, Matt, Stephon Diggs now on his third team. It was clear there was something going on with the Buffalo Bills. I felt like all season long. Then it got real good later on into the season. When Stephon Diggs wasn't seeing the football, I don't think he had a hundred yard game since like week six or week seven of the season. Very interesting move and a hell of a shakeup when you're talking about one of the star receivers in this league going to Houston, CJ Stroud, just smiling on this Wednesday morning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this has no effect on the Packers or nothing to do with the Packers, but it's definitely an interesting move. Um, if you're just a football fan and follow the sport in general. Um, oh Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway is Texans are, are going to be contenders this year. They, they may not have been Super Bowl contenders last year, but they were one of those surprise teams along with the Packers with the first year starting quarterback who really made some noise. Now they have a top three at the wide receiver position of Stefan Diggs, Tank Dell and Nico Collins. And they also got Joe Mixon in free agency. So they're going to be a problem. I wonder what the bills do at wide receiver. Now they don't have Gabe Davis anymore. Well, that's uh, right. They don't have Diggs. They still have an elite quarterback in Josh Allen. You can't just roll into a season with nobody for him to throw to. So I wonder if the the Bills try and, you know, make a move for a receiver in the draft. It seems like a very weird transitional period for the Bills, who we look at as a perennial playoff team and contender, which I think is true, but they are like, you know, they they're they're just changes going on with them all around. And Josh Allen obviously is still I mean, there. Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde have been fixtures on that yeah, team, yeah. and both of them will be gone. Diggs will be gone, like you mentioned, their entire wide receiver room uh will be gone. But this is and and from the Houston side of things, Matt, this is why and and this is maybe how I'll, I can kind of tie it in a little bit more with the Green Bay Packers, because you're seeing teams in the division try to have a situation like Houston has right now, right? Where you see in your first year, okay, we got our guy at the quarterback spot. And for the next two to three years, we're going to be able to get away with paying him 7 million bucks and we can load up with high end top end talent. And this is, this is the golden ticket. It seems like in the NFL, if you can get a quarterback who's legit on a rookie deal, Houston going all in with it. Could this be what the Bears are trying to have come up next year? Because they got a ton of money to spend. They end up going and basically buying Keenan Allen for a fourth round pick because the Chargers wanted him to take a pay cut. They might draft a receiver at nine as well. And the Vikings are sitting there trying to do this exact thing. This is this is the blueprint of what Houston is really. I mean, they hit a jackpot with Stroud. We already knew. But now it seems like they're doing what you're supposed to do when you have already won that jackpot in the first year. Right, and I would say the Texans are more so trying to keep up with the Chiefs and the you know the Bengals when they have Joe Burrow healthy and the Ravens and you know those top teams. The Bears are just trying to keep up with the teams in their division because the Texans, mm -hmm. you know, going from playoff team to Super Bowl sure. contender, the Bears are just trying to go from you know last place in the division to you know uh, did they finish in last place. I don't remember if they finished in last place. They might have finished in third. Regardless, uh, I think they would have still finished but, in last place. But, yes, they, but they weren't as 
I don't know about you guys. I don't look at the Bears last year as being bad as previous versions of them. They no, seven, of course not. Mm-hmm. But but they still have to do things to you know close the gap between them and the Packers, them and the yeah. Lions. And credit to them, it looks like they're doing it. They're about to get Caleb Williams as their quarterback. They're uh, getting Keenan Allen as a number one slash one A receiver along with DJ Moore. Does it make them better than the Packers or the Lions? We'll see. I don't think so yet, but right. um, that's what the lesser teams in the league have to do. Is That's why you don't see a lot of the great teams. Let's say the Chiefs. Sure, they got Marquise Hollywood Brown, and, and they're making some moves, and every team makes some moves. But these gigantic moves, you don't always see like the top teams make them because they don't have to improve as much right. to contend. Yeah, and in the Houston situation is I mean, it is just fascinating. You go from having your franchise quarterback say, I'm never playing here again, to then everything that happened to said former franchise quarterback. You end up trading him in a deal with the Browns. And then you luck into CJ Stroud, who just seems like the coolest dude and the coolest, calmest customer that you could possibly have face of the franchise for the next potential 15 years. And you go from a perennial doormat to one of the talks of the league that that's what the bears are trying to do. And that's what the Vikings are trying to uh, seemingly Matt keep themselves away from, right? Like the, the Wilfs ownership in Minnesota, they have always been like between six and 10 and 10 and six, Yeah, right? Like they've had the flare up year where all of a sudden you get far and you go 12 and four. You have one year where everything blows up. Brad Childress ends up getting fired mid season and you're five and 12, but generally you're going to stay right here in the middle. That's kind of what they've done. And it seems like they are pressing the pedal all the way down to the floorboard and they are going to try to go find themselves a franchise quarterback in this draft. Are you hearing kind of the same thing that if anybody's going to be active on draft day and make that big, big swing, it seems like it's those boys in purple up in Minnesota. Well, I don't have any sources with the Vikings since I don't cover them, but uh, I would imagine. So that was the first thing that, came to mind when they made that trade for the additional first round pick is that they were going to package those two to move up for a guy. Now who's going to be that guy? Are they going to get up to three or four? Those are the questions remaining. Um, You know, it also depends on who the commanders take it to the Vikings might want Jaden Daniels, but if the commanders take them, they'd have to shift. Or if the commanders take Drake may and, the Vikings like Jaden Daniels. Who knows? The, the Packers could be facing J.J. McCarthy for the next 10 years. It'll mm-hmm. be very yeah, interesting be. to see um, what the Packers division rivals do in this draft, obviously with two of them set to be major players in the Vikings and the Bears. But the reason the Packers, there are going to be big players in this draft, but not you know near the top of the draft, more so because they have tied for the most picks in the draft and uh, five between 25 and 91. So there will be movement and the Packers will add some, you know, immediate starters and, and key depth pieces. But I think Packer fans would take it this way where there's not as much, you know, news and hubbub and, and excitement around the Packers this draft because they were good last year. Like yeah, fans can have it one of two ways. They can either have, the most interesting time of their team's year be this time of year, or they can have their team's most interesting time of the year be uh, in early January and beyond. And I yeah. think the Packers would take the latter, which is why this time of year is a little bit quieter for those folks in Green Bay. But I think it's enjoyable. Although, damn, this is a fun year, right? Like five exactly. picks in the five first picks. three rounds. It's, in, it's impressive. And when you came off a year where you d- did really well in the field, the late push, nine and eight playoff mm-hmm. win, and then you get a bunch of high picks to supplement the excitement of what happened on the field, so I would have to agree with you, Billy. And for you, man, it's got to be like, is it like mock draft season? Everyone's asking you for mock drafts or you have to give a mock draft or you're immersed in mock drafts. Tell everyone mm-hmm. what you know about Graham Barton. And and what they want you to do is just say Graham Barton or Cooper DeJean. Like I'm just assuming oh, like just like trying to like, yeah, but what do you think about Cooper? We're getting him right. Like, you know, how many people are asking you about that? It's got to be. A, that's what it's got to be right now for you. Right. It's just mock draft season. Yeah, absolutely. And and there's no bigger you know, guessing time than, than draft season. Nobody's telling the truth. If you're hearing things, it's all projections. Nobody's going to, you know, give their actual hand up 
because why would they? So right now is just all about projections and guessing. And, and all we can do is say, okay, here's what common sense would indicate the Packers positions of need are. Sure. Here's what Brian Gutekunst has said about certain positions. For example, he said he wants to pair Xavier McKinney with a young safety who has his best football ahead of him. So all these fans clamoring for Justin Simmons. Well, if we're going to trust what the GM says, and don't get me wrong, we shouldn't always do that because he said Aaron Jones would absolutely be back or he absolutely expected Aaron Jones to be back. So Brian Gutekunst isn't required to go up there and tell the absolute truth. But like we can deduce that the Packers are going to draft a safety early or go with Anthony Johnson or add inside linebackers because Goody said he wants to, you know, add more depth there. Or draft an edge rusher because uh, their number three or four edge rusher tore his ACL in the playoffs and they need mm-hmm. a number four edge rusher to to play substantial snaps if they don't like Brenton Cox. And we, but, and Matt, and it's it's really a, a focal point too because they are going to need that pass rusher, like you mentioned, with, with the Enegbare injury. That's a spot that's going to play, right? And like Kuhn yeah. and I were kind of parsing through it last week of we don't know exactly what we don't what we don't know about Jeff Halfley's defense of how he's going to implement guys right like Rashawn Gary one of the biggest hangups for Kuhn last year was the snap count deal I don't know that Jeff Halfley is going to oblige to max 65 percent snaps or maybe that's a decision made more at the head coaching spot but like how much that guy is going to play there's a lot of dudes there at the front at the back end of the first round chop Robinson is one that a lot of people will bring on up that it's difficult to not go with one of those premier positions. It seems like of a corner or pass rusher, because they might be more plentiful at that spot. Yeah. I was asked in my mailbag this morning, what could be an underrated position that the Packers target early in the draft? And I said, edge rusher, because twice in Brian Gutekunst's six drafts in charge, he's taken an edge rusher in the first round. I'm not saying they're going to take one in the first round, but everyone's listing myself included, you know, safety, uh, you know, interior offensive line, maybe left tackle, corner maybe as positions of need early in the draft. But Goody has taken an edge rusher with a first-round pick in 2019 and Rashawn Gary in 2023 and Lucas Van Ness for that player to start number four on the depth chart. The Packers Mm -hmm. believe in bringing edge rushers along slowly, developing them. You know, they drafted Gary after signing both Smiths. They drafted Van Ness after you know giving Preston Smith an extension, they were about to give Rashawn Gary an extension. But like you said, Billy, that's a position where the reserves play a lot more than reserves at, say, cornerback, because there's mm-hmm. not a rotation at cornerback. There is at edge rusher. So um, Preston Smith might be on his final year with the Packers. So the Packers might need a guy, not just for depth this year, but to play maybe even more snaps in the future. And the Packers have the luxury this season of, Entering last year's draft, they had a, they had a bunch of holes. They they needed to fill you know a bunch of spots because they were in the quote unquote rebuild. This year, they don't have as many gaping holes. There's far more right. need for depth than there are for starters. So maybe the Packers can afford to make a move like that. Fans probably wouldn't be happy about it. They want to see a safety and a left tackle, a starting right guard. But the Packers have some flexibility in a couple weeks. They really, Matt, what they really want is they want them to take the guy that they told their aunt they were going to draft, right? Like they want, they want, they want their guy to be the one taken because then you can look even smarter. And Brian Gutekunst has rarely kind of done that. Like even Alexander, I know he traded around to go get Savage. I don't think anybody was thinking would be somebody that they'd be interested in. Um, I got to ask you before we let you go, Matt, this can go reporter side. This can go opinion side. There's so many different ways that people are taking the caught off guard quote from Matt LaFleur on the Aaron Jones piece uh, of him being gone. Then yesterday it flares back on up because he is interviewed by Kevin Clark of Omaha productions. Who's the most badass player you've ever coached. He said, it's a little soon, but it's Aaron Jones. Cause he's an absolute savage at 190 pounds. What are you making of all the Aaron Jones, Matt LaFleur still seemingly not hung up on the ex-girlfriend or the old girlfriend, but just saying like, man, I don't know that I was fully ready for this thing to be done. It just seems like to me, they weren't necessarily planning on being able to get Jacobs that quickly in free agency. And then everything happened real quick. What's your take on it? Yeah. 
so I had reported at the time everything that had gone on with with Jones, and that was um, they wanted him to take about a fifty percent pay cut. And that group being the front office, correct. And the final offer was made. I, I put the the exact numbers of the final offer out there. I think it was something like uh, four million base salary and two million in incentives. Mm-hmm. Um, his original contract with the Packers was eleven million in base and two million in incentives. And they had made that final offer the Friday before uh, the legal tampering period. And Jones's camp, Drew Rosenhaus countered. And the Packers were like, well, that was our final offer. So they just went on their separate ways. Then they turned their attention to Josh Jacobs. From what I've heard, and I don't think I've concretely written this before, but people can kind of read between the lines. Matt LaFleur was not happy in the slightest with, with Aaron mm-hmm. Jones being released. I don't know if he was necessarily... Um, caught off guard as in not told. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, I don't want to assume what he meant by saying caught off guard. All I know is that I don't, uh, let me, let me say it this way. I don't know if Matt LaFleur is saying I wasn't told and they just did it not telling me or when they told me I was caught off guard because I just expected he would be there. I don't know which one of those it is. Regardless, what I do know because of what I've told from people I trust is that Matt LaFleur was, I don't know if furious, enraged is the right word, but not happy in the slightest that Aaron Jones was released. Now, I'm not saying Brian Gutekunst was happy, right? but Matt LaFleur, certainly not. And, and I do think there is this way of doing things in Green Bay that you know Aaron Rodgers has talked about before, how um, you know the... Front office does personnel, coaches coach, players play. Now, I'm not saying that all the time. Matt LaFleur certainly, I would imagine, has say in some personnel moves. But if he had a strong say in this one, I'm not sure Aaron Jones would be gone. I'm just assuming that he didn't in this one. And mm-hmm. it's and I don't know how widespread of a of a theme that is that, you know, he's pissed off at moves, but maybe there is more collaboration in other places. Yeah, Matt, you and I are pretty much right on the same wavelength. And again, like, I, please, if it sounds like I'm speaking for you, cut me off here. But like what you're reporting was and is very clear. I don't think he was happy about it. I think it was at one particular point in time. It was like, hey, if this happens, this happens, this happens. Might have to move off him. Yeah, that, let's not have that situation happen. Then all of a sudden it does. And it's, whoa, what? Really? That's That was our end result was, was cutting Aaron Jones. Surprise of you know, the process maybe, but the end result, I think all of us were surprised because we all then allowed ourselves to go there for that hour and 14 minutes yeah, yeah. where it was going to be Jones and Jacobs. And I can just imagine Matt LaFleur up on the whiteboard, just saying, Holy cow, I'm going to be drawing up this play, that play, this play. And quickly it all changed in a matter of moments. And not everyone gets as clear of a heads up as maybe some would, would like. Yeah. I'm not sure if Matt LaFleur ever thought there was a chance they would have both of those guys. Um, yeah. I think the Packers wanted to hold on to Jones as long as possible to try and work something out. Sure. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, from what I've heard, Jones basically reached back out to Matt LaFleur and said, can you make sure I get released? Cause, cause they already had a feeling that, you know, he was going to be released because they couldn't agree on, you know, a, a pay cut or a new contract. And from what I've heard, Aaron Jones reached back out to Matt LaFleur and said, Hey, can you kind of nudge them to release me so I can find a team? Because from my understanding, the Packers basically were willing to hold on to him uh, for longer. He was still under contract in maybe hopes they could work something out and maybe hopes that uh, Jones's camp would come closer to what the Packers wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They weren't going to do that. So, but they, they knew that Jones was going to, you know, get released and didn't want to wait, didn't want the Packers to hold on to Jones because by the time the running back market dried up, Jones would get less money and maybe not have a starting role somewhere. So from my understanding, Jones reached back out to Matt LaFleur and said, hey, can you you know try and help get me released so I can find a starting spot right. and get more money wow. pretty much uh, before this running back market dries up? And, and that's what happened. Before you turn into Dalvin Cook. Right. Like before you turn into Dalvin Cook, who, you know, two months later is then released. And then, you know, you're sitting around looking at scraps, Matt, that's fantastic stuff. It's great stuff. stuff. We really appreciate it. Sorry. You're not cheering on your Marquette future 
Um, they stink. They stink. What happened, Armin? Yeah, they, Come on, Armin. They missed shots. I mean, I don't know they stink, but they, they had a bad shooting day. The rims, we don't know what's going on there with the with the These balls overinflated and the rims. balls? What are we talking about? Unfortunately, I'm not, you're right. They ran into their worst shooting day of the year on the worst day, so unfortunately. I'm not, they weren't going to win it all anyway, so it's it's whatever. But um, It was going to be fun. Though, I'm not going to get on here and trash 20-year-old kids, but has David Joplin ever had that bad of a game in a Marquette uniform before? No, and it's too bad Never. because he just had his best moment the week before, and I saw it. So I felt I felt terrible for him because I know he's better than that. I know he knows that, but he poor just kid shots. couldn't throw a beach ball into Lake Michigan. And I'm when, like, man, this kid is having the worst day. And when he started thinking about it, it, it was John Starks. What was that? 94 over 17. It was like that feeling. So Matt and I weren't alive for that one. Uh, but Matt, yeah, but Matt right. knows the Knicks. I think I don't know. I'll just okay. Matt, appreciate it, man. Rest up this weekend. We'll talk next week. Thanks, guys. Yeah. That's Matt LaFleur. Matt yeah, Schneidman it. on I, Matt LaFleur. That is right. And on Tyler Kolick and company not Gosh. being able to get it done. He's right. I mean, that was the worst. You didn't think we were going to bring that up today, did you? you no, know, the grief washes over you once again. But it's okay. It's we move on. You know, that's life. You know, we move on. I'll move on to Phoenix, Arizona coming up uh, later on today. I'll be live from Phoenix tomorrow, hopefully with Brian Butch. I say hopefully because he's flying out of Appleton and Lord only knows the issues that they're going on with dealing with up there. Hopefully we'll be doing the final four show from Phoenix coming up tomorrow at six. We will be doing this radio program nine to noon. Armin Sari and myself, Billy Schmidt, and we'll welcome Trey Crosby on. Talk about that Bucks Wizards game as difficult as it is. You want to talk about grief washing over you, Armin? Yeah. Let that one wash over you again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trey Crosby will tell us exactly what we need to know about our Milwaukee Bucks coming up right after this. And then it'll all get better because we'll turn our attention right back to some Milwaukee Brewers conversation and more of what Match Diamond was talking about with the Green Bay Packers and that fascinating handoff from the running back spot to another one. It's nine to noon on the game. John Kuhn here for Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Turn your ordinary space into something extraordinary with brand new Pella Windows. The luxurious look, sleek design, and custom colors available is guaranteed to give your home the extra pop to entertain and keep you comfortable. The best of both worlds. At Pella, we see windows differently. We have the highest rated energy efficient products and complete range of durable, functional, and high quality products that bring out the best for your home. Plus, getting the perfect windows and doors for your home have never been easier. Right now, get 0% interest for up to 36 months or no down payment, no interest, and no payment for up to 18 months if you book by April 30th. That's right. Get 0% interest for up to 36 months or no down payment, no interest, and no payment for 18 months if you book by April 30th. That is a crazy deal. Pella is rated number one by Milwaukee homeowners as the window brand that stands behind their products. So take ownership of your living space and make it a place worth living with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin.
Nine to noon on the game. Welcome in Trey Crosby with that tune. Glad that's a Kanye tune. As I'm opposed glad, to what? I'm glad that's not a Diddy tune. Because then no, we, no, no, we'd have to change it and if all we, that kind of stuff. If it was Diddy, we'd have to change it. I yeah, we'd know. have to change it. It's too good of a song. We oh, don't want to do any of that. Are we nonsense. at that point yet where we're we're at that point yet, or we have to still wait it out a bit? Maybe Trey can help us with this. Like, are we out of Diddy? Like, no more Diddy now at all? We've talked about this, but we I, haven't I, come up with an agreement yet. I don't think we're there just yet. I don't think we we, we played we played Diddy going into you are tra- our you are trash thing the last Saturday. Right. right. Okay. Well, that was topical though. <laughs> I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're there yet. We All right, we, let's, let's wait it out a little bit longer. Because he, he, he was trash last week. Well, yeah, but we don't have a conclusion if he's totally canceled from playing. Because like he my, won, you are trash last week, right, Trey? I mean that that was that was hands down for him, correct? Yeah, running away. away. Good, I, mean, I good. think I, I did both. Say. But it's not like we're like, you know, I, I haven't been able to even think about playing Robert Kelly for like the last 12 years. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's there's you no know. Robert. He's yeah, he's 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 off there. He's been off for a while. I he's, can't even he's play. Been off, yeah. I can't even let that play by accident around the house. Like Laura will get mad at me. Do but. you even feel bad when you when you post the meme of him on the sit down interview? Because oh, every once yeah. in a while, I'll rip that meme yeah, on. It's just good, too good. Yeah. All right. All that good deflecting to not discuss <laughs> what happened in the nation's capital last night. Uh, Trey, I, I want to start here because you lose the Washington Wizards. All right. I'm not going to say that it's going to happen. You probably shouldn't lose as one of the best teams in the NBA to one of the worst teams in the NBA. I'll throw that disqualifier or disqualifier on out here. However, there are going to be nights in which you say WTF. Last night is one of those nights you were fighting with people talking about it online. And I thought you made a great point about where you see the bucks right now. Could they go on a run in the Eastern conference playoffs and win the East? Yes. Would you bet on them? You said last night, no. And I think that's a good point. Good place to at least start with how you feel about them at this particular point in time. Yeah, and I think so. That that conversation was kind of getting into you know people because I think there there's a lot of comments, a lot of commentary around uh, whether you you know people in the but I think there's a lot of in the in the fan base people are are I don't want to say scared, but they are their expectations are lowered and you don't know what's going to happen to this basketball team. And the response to that was, well, after the cowards think and you know all this stuff. And and yet yeah, to your point, can nobody's saying that they don't think the Bucks are capable of literally going on a run and winning and, 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 and just beating the snot out of everybody and having a great postseason. Nobody's saying that they can't see that happen. But, yeah, that's where I'm at. I mean, I, I just wouldn't – we got sport, legal sports betting here in North Carolina. I wouldn't put my money on it. And so if that's a judge of what's cowardly, then, then sure, I'll be a coward. Uh, because, again, I just can't in good conscience look at that basketball team and, you know, knowing everything we know, and I, cause I, I said this the other day, too, and this is kind of kind of uh, humorous to me. The other day when, when, when Boston lost that 30-point lead to Atlanta, I tweeted out and I said, Boston, when someone shows you who they are, when Boston shows you who they are, believe them. And a lot of people, you know, it was, it was kind of funny, but I, I alluded to the fact that Every when Boston gets in close games, late game situations, they're a very beatable team. Like to me, Boston mm-hmm. is a front running team. They just blow people out. You get them to the end of games, and they kind of falter their their strategy. Everything about them kind of falters. I can't look at the Bucks and then act like the Bucks don't have problems when they when we see the same sort of things. They had to come back like literally the night after that happened to Boston. I can't remember who it was. Uh, the, I think it was to the Lakers. The Bucks blew it, uh, basically a twenty-point lead, yep. uh, and then uh, and then you start to see these kind of bad losses. Um, you see, you see a few of them pile up under Doc Rivers. So, yeah, and I, I think that you know this team just and Doc Rivers alluded to in his post game last night where he said that um, you know he didn't like the the team was didn't have serious preparation on the road. Again, I'd argue some of that is up to you, Doc Rivers, to to, to make sure the team prepared, but. Um, but yeah, I think there's some. I, I, I definitely think there's a problem for this basketball team, and you, you know, you'd be a, you, you kind of are being naive if you're if you don't see that and are at least concerned by some of the things you see from this basketball team. And like I said, forget the the first forty some games. Just post post Agent Griffin and into Doc Rivers. There, there's a lot of problems off this basketball team. Yeah, they're pretty much five hundred cents, right? Like, I mean, I I think that's that's 
clear. Now we knew the schedule was going to be much different, much more difficult. Uh, however, when you're taking the L's to the least difficult of the difficult, most difficult part of the schedule that you're going to deal with, these questions are going to pop on up. Trey, I, I do have an investment on the bucks uh, to win the Eastern conference three to one place, maybe about a month and a half ago. And I thought I was getting screaming value. I thought that throughout the next two months that was going to continue to go down and it was going to be closer, closer to even odds for the bucks and Celtics. Instead, it's only gone in the opposite direction. And the Celtics have not even necessarily become heavier favorites, but there's more questions about the East, right? Like Embiid comes back last night. I don't know how great he looked, but he played 30 minutes. They come back and beat Oklahoma city without Oklahoma city's best player. The East just looks like a little bit more formidable. Does it feel to you maybe more than just Bucks and Celtics as many had presumed, or is that still where your focal point is here on trying to get on out? Yeah, um, I, I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's that the East is, has has better opponents versus the Bucks have not um, separated themselves like Boston has. Like I think everybody yeah. still say, okay, it's only right. Boston. And who else? Like, I don't – like, I look at the Cavaliers. I think they have problems. We talked about this. Before. I look at the Cavs and they have problems. I look at the Knicks. I'm not convinced. Um, you know, Miami's a dark horse, but they haven't shown it all year, so they're going to be relying upon, you know, the Heat voodoo magic and Jimmy Butler becoming Jimmy Butler in the playoffs. The 76ers, you just mentioned it with their injury uh, concerns they have, plus Joel Embiid, even when he's been quote-unquote healthy, has always had injury concerns and injury history issues. So, yeah, I think that's more about what it is, more so than teams in the East, you know, coming up and being, you know, formidable opponents. The Bucks have, have basically, they, they sink right down to the bottom with the rest of the, uh, the teams. And so you want to see who's going to be the team that's going to compete with Boston um, for a championship. And those narratives will be written. They'll be drawn. Somebody clearly will, will advance and, and will, you know, that'll be an interesting test. Um, but, yeah, I think there's, there's just more question marks surrounding this Milwaukee Bucks basketball team when, clear again, they have the talent to do it. Um, they're just questioning as far as the will, the want to, the effort. And especially, you know, my, it, it is the thing that you can't ignore at all is what they're doing on the road. And, you know, there have been some really bad losses on the road. And it gets you to thinking, you know, you're going to be the 2C, 3C, whatever you are. The Bucks in the past have lost some home games, some have started off 0-1 or whatever. I don't know the and, and, you, know, it's, yeah, you can't stumble like that, covered. right? And if you, yeah, you, I, I, I think a lot of people have. You start off oh one, it's not gonna be okay. We'll just get it back, and then we'll, we'll, win, we'll we got to steal one on the road there. I don't know that at all. You, you got your home game is gonna be uh, are gonna be excruciatingly, uh, increasingly important. Don't, not so capability to play on the road. Well, what do you make of all that? What Doc was saying about the entire operation on the road, how we travel. Is he taking a shot at the ball, kids? Come on, what is he doing? Is this an equipment manager Come on. thing? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's a lack of accountability, and I think, you know, that's because... and, and J.J. Reddick loves was that. Well, I, exactly, and what I didn't like was the part where Doc said, well, I was sitting back taking a lot of notes. Taking notes, baby. You've been with the team for thirty games. Like, what do, what do you mean we're taking... Like, it, I, 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 don't, I don't get some of that stuff, and again, it's... It, what Doc Rivers has shown is if this thing falls apart, his MO has always been to point fingers. He's been setting it up all, since since he got with the Bucks. He's been setting up excuses. Uh, and, again, I, I hope it doesn't happen. But if it does, you know he's going to point to the excuses. And here's the other thing. To me, because you have Dame missing games for personal reasons and what have you, and and Chris has been, has, has been out a lot of – I don't think you can go with the whole notion that, well, the team didn't have enough time to gel – because they get, I don't know how you can how, how guys can or how you can be okay with guys missing games and then come with the excuse of well the guy we we just didn't have enough time. Well, oh, that's Jacob, a fair point. And I think Chris, Dame, and Giannis, I believe they play what six games under Doc Rivers together. Well, that's the thing; they haven't played much. Yeah, and and and, and Billy was Billy's thought was that they he was soft launching next year or preparing to tell everybody like next year. He's going to be here next year. They signed so, him to a four year, $40 million well, deal. He's going to be the coach next year. It I, seemed like to me, he was setting that up. And I get what you're saying, Trey, whether it's excuse making or not, but we always say we want our coach to be honest or like have accountability. 
I, I understand what you're saying. I just don't understand why the vibes cannot stay good with this team for more than two weeks. It seems like every time they turn a corner and the vibes are getting good, then something happens again. Yet, I, I, yet what you said before is true about other teams having issues. You look up and they're still second in the East. After all the problems that we talk about every day with this team or the disappointments or the vibes, they're still exactly where we thought they'd be, right? Did anyone think they'd be first in the East? I mean, I did it. So we still have to remember that, I think. Yeah, but it, it's the way it's happened. I, mean, I know. Yes, yeah, you're, you're right. You're, you're you're there. I mean, yeah, you're not. You're not. We're not wrong. But yeah, it's just the way. Like you talk about the vibes. It just hasn't looked good and hasn't been cohesive um, for for any length of time. And so I think that's what people are looking at. And 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 they have not again separated themselves, pulled apart from the pack like Boston. I think even fine. If you're saying the East and Boston is, for, I think that's fine. I think again, you you, you would have wanted to see the Bucks really separate themselves mm -hmm. and be that clear cut number two team in the East. And yeah, right now I think there's gonna be a lot of again, there just are there are a lot of questions. Um, no matter and again, that's no matter who you face um, in that two seed, whether it's whether you face Miami, Boston, I'm excuse me, whether you face Miami, Indiana, or uh, or Philly or Philadelphia, there's gonna be a lot of questions about uh, you know about how the thing's gonna go. And the Bucks gonna have to prove it. They absolutely gonna have to prove it. That was my final question, Trey. You named the, the three teams, Pacers, Heat, Sixers. I asked Armin yesterday or two days ago, which one would he be most fearful to face? He said Miami. What about you? That's so tough. Um, you're probably right. It's prob Miami's probably the one I, I'd be most fearful of facing. But to me, I think you either want to face Miami or Indiana. This team has some demons. I said this the other day, but this team has demons, and I think the Milwaukee Bucks, unlike other years, unlike some other, you know, um, what you may think about, this basketball team needs to go face these fears, needs to go beat a quality opponent, yep. um, and and I think that'll get the jitters out of them better than they not. You know, Philly's not going. Philly's not going to be a pushover either. But I mean, I can imagine Embiid being hurt or whatever. I don't want the easiest path to the conference finals. This team needs to go through a challenge, and again, you beat a Miami team that has beaten you in the past and has and has some some history against you. I think that's a momentum builder. You beat an Indiana team that has won that won four out of five this year. Some history, animosity in that um, quote unquote rivalry. That's something you can build off of going into the second round. This team doesn't is a team that doesn't need any easy quote unquote easy matchups uh, to get themselves to the to the finals. They need to be tested early um, because they have focus issues and I need them to be locked in from game one. Could not agree with you more, Trey. That is that is exactly how I'm feeling with it. You need to go and feel good about a win in the first round. And if you can, and if you're going to get one, the only way to exercise some demons, stop running from your nightmares, Armin. Stop running from those yeah, nightmares. Run from nightmare. Let's see it. Miami right, right. in that first round. Trey, we'll talk next week, man. Really appreciate it. And we'll be watching tonight after let's not lose to the Grizzlies again. How about that? Come on. Now let's not lose to the Grizzlies let's again, not, Doc. Let's, let's go. It. Let's, and let's back at home, done. so it shouldn't be an issue. And we'll be watching on the Cream City crossover, man. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it, fellas. Let's beat the Grizzlies tonight. Let's I think that'd be a good beat start. Beat the Grizzlies really. tonight. Just yeah. start start with that. Start with real low on the totem pole, and then start working your way on up. Like that, Billy. Um, looks like an unexpected IL trip for one of the uh, Brewers here. We'll have that breaking news so after the break. Gone. All right. And a little bit of audio from Murph pregame about it. Thanks to Spencer Williams, who's down at the ballpark. We will have that for you in a matter of moments. Some breaking news is next on 9 and Noon with Armin Sarian and Billy Schmidt on the game.
All right, 9 to noon, hour two, wrapping up with breaking news uh, with your Milwaukee Brewers transaction just being announced, thanks to Mike Vassallo. J.B. Bukowskis, the right-handed reliever, recalled from AAA Nashville as the team has placed Trevor McGill on the seven-day concussion list, retroactive to March 31st. Well, wait a second. Trevor McGill didn't pitch yesterday. They didn't play on... Monday, right? I don't think he got a concussion when I was watching on Sunday. So Brewers manager, Pat Murphy, can you explain what happened to Trevor McGill? Yeah, we do have information regarding McGill. He will be placed on the concussion IL uh, retro Sunday. He had food poisoning on Saturday and, um, ended up feigning in a phone store, a Spectrum phone store. Feigning, fell to the ground, hit his head. And um, when he came to, um, you know, he called uh, our people and let them know. And then uh, we evaluated him the next morning and he was uh, had a concussion. So he's on the seven-day concussion. Wow. Where does that rank up on your list of unusual injuries uh, question Todd yeah it's scary yeah. you know that this one's scary you know it's not one you know when he I guess he hadn't had much in his system I don't know the whole thing he'll tell you about it but you know, it's scary so there you okay. have it and, and I, I understand the question from Todd because I think a lot of Brewers fans are thinking the same thing we've had weird injuries over the years Trevor McCase breaking a hand. I didn't want to even start with the, the list of crazy stuff. Salatongs, Matt Wise. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Narvis in with the scissors cutting his, his glove up. Yep, cutting his glove I up. I think it was um, going back to Steve Sparks trying to rip a phone book apart, but it is scary when you you're passing out McGill six eight. Yeah, this know? isn't this isn't Lucroy uh, no, 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 closing no, no. his hand on the suitcase and then all of a sudden breaking it, which we were nervous we had a situation of with Garrett Mitchell. Now Garrett Mitchell sure. broke his finger on one of the backfields during uh spring training. And who am I thinking of that ran into the wall shagging flies the pitcher last year? Right? Who was that that broke his <laughs> finger? I'm blanking. Uh, no, I'm serious. I know you are and I'm try I'm laughing because I'm trying to remember right. it wasn't a pitcher, it was Rowdy Telez. Rowdy, oh Rowdy, of course, yeah. So it just, you know, you know, this was scary. Anytime you were talking about passing out. Yeah, this stuff. is this is not getting your finger caught in the wall, shagging fly balls, trying to rob a home run. No, 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 no. I mean, obviously. But the, what the actual uh, heck? I, I, I thought I get the text from Spencer, and thank you, by the way, Spencer Williams, down there at the uh, stadium pregame, getting the info, getting the info and the audio right to me so we can get on air. I thought he was – I didn't think he was kidding, but I, I had to read his text twice. When he said, passed out in the Spectrum store, concussion, food poisoning, McGill IL, audio what? coming. It's kind of the, I kind of had to absorb that for a second. Yeah, let so, that bake. Think but, of what uh, that means. Okay, I guess. Okay. I guess. Hopefully, he's good. I is good. I don't Damn. know. I don't know. Yeah. Concussions are obviously a part of sports. Could you now. imagine being that Spectrum guy? Well, he's a big McGill. He's, he's six eight. eight. He's a big boy. So that's all, all right, sir. Uh, so this is all what your iPhone 15 can do. If you go to this <laughs> right, spot right, right here, you can change on your. What the? Well, I know it's just on the ground. And when someone, I, tr I was just showing him his notification changes. And when someone passes out, you don't know what the reason is. I mean, there could be a lot going on, you know, so it could be worse, obviously, you know, so. Wow. Hopefully... Okay. Trevor, Trevor McGill. Let's get better. Let's get better. Trevor McGill. All right, it was like, you think Holy cow. Baseball God said, we're going to test you. Pat Murphy this is your first time. We're going to test you. You think that things are going well? Yeah, that big right-hander is going to get a concussion looking at a new Android. There's another injury. Wow. Yeah, another injury for you. And then and then in this manner. So, uh, you know, glad strange. he's good. Very, but... very strange. We we are glad that he's okay. He's going to talk apparently to the uh, media, it sounds like, <laughs> the way that he said it right there. So, uh, very interesting story. We'll have your lineup for the Brewers and Twins. Game two of their quick two-game series, the first <sighs> home series of the season. We'll have that for you coming up next. Hour three, always our best one of the day. Armin's not feigning. Not yeah, I'm good here. I'm it's, you can see me on camera. We're good. Right so now far. I'm okay. We got an hour to go. I'm gonna stay hydrated here. We're gonna stay hydrated and make water. sure that we can survive for this next hour and that we don't go down with you on nine to noon.
Nine to noon, hour three on the game, hanging out with you and maybe being Stefan Diggs' companion as he flies down to Houston, Texas, as he has been traded from the Buffalo Bills to the Texans. Now, I'm trying to analyze the entire package of picks here, Armin, because it's a very convoluted situation. Okay, because, you know, Diggs has been moved again for big, a big amount of picks here. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, and this one's maybe a little bit different. It's a 2025 second-round pick okay. going to Buffalo. It's Minnesota's second round pick that is being traded in 2025 to Buffalo to Buffalo. So what's Minnesota getting here? Minnesota is not a part of the trade. That's what I was. I was oh. struggling to figure out. There's an earlier deal so, yeah, yeah, yeah. when the 23rd pick that I believe is trade changed hands twice now between Houston, Cleveland. Now Minnesota owns the 23rd pick. They traded a couple of picks to go up from the second round in and grab okay. another first round pick. And one of those what was one of those is the 2025 Houston. pick that Houston is now sending to Buffalo. So two picks going to Buffalo, two second rounders. Am I wrong? One second rounder, one second round pick in 2025 is and, going to Buffalo. And that used to be Minnesota's pick. Correct. So why don't they just say, because it, it was, it was currently Houston's pick. It was. It, it, well, and it, I don't care how it got there. So it's can, more of the it, it, the biggest reason why the connotation of it is right. So that in 2025, when Houston is picking 30th, you understand why, and Minnesota is picking yeah. fourth, then you understand why they have you know the 36th pick okay. instead of the 60th pick. Well, I gotta say, I mean, the second rounder, I guess, seems right, but. Well, Diggs has produced a lot in this league and now is only worth a Massive. second round it. You know, second rounder. You it makes you wonder is a couple of things, right? Is a lot of people think Diggs is a headache, right? Sometimes. That's a part of um, it. Um the question is how long is his value gonna last as a premier receiver in this league? Well, and how much is it, how long is his production as a production premier gonna last, receiver yeah. gonna be? I mean, he is 30, he turns 31 in the middle of this football season. So maybe that seems like right a right amount of market for him. And you pick. you made the statement you said the quiet part out loud that he has been noted as a potential headache right like so last year yeah. going into the season yeah you know, we'll just you know bring up certain things and takes that were right at one particular point in time i was looking really good on my statement of the buffalo bills were going to miss the playoffs for a long time, you were. I was looking real good. And they really turned their ship around because they were about to do that. Yeah. And they win six straight games, win the division. Get a home game against Kansas City. Get a home game against Kansas City, which is, they've been wanting all along. Which was kind of crazy. They wanted it so long, couldn't come through. Unfortunately, lost a close game. Unfortunately for them, I don't know if you're a fan or not. You know, yeah, but, but I mean, like, in the midst of all that winning, right? Like, in the midst of them changing the 2023 season around, Here's Stefan Diggs, who's supposed to be their second best player right behind Josh Allen, not really being a factor. His last 100-yard game with Buffalo is when he had 16 targets, 10 grabs, 100 yards, week six in a 14-9 win against the Giants. It did see yeah, it faded away. It faded away there. And he has those bursts of production that can be very tantalizing. You know, the deep threat, all that stuff. Yeah. And in then their, it, it started to fade. He was complaining about targets, all that stuff. When they're six and six and they start their five game winning streak that ultimately gets them the win and you win the division game week 18 against the Miami Dolphins. They beat Kansas City with Diggs getting four catches for 24 yards, followed by a 31 10 dominating win over the Cowboys where he gets four catches for 48 yards. You're yeah. like, okay, well, they ran the ball, right? Makes sense. Go up against LA, 24-22, kind of a shootout, five catches, 29 yards. Like, okay, well, you know, like Gabe Davis had a big game. Sure. Gabe Davis had a touchdown. That one. Next week, oh, well, you're going to need him against New England. He always cooks New England, four catches, 26 yards. And, and follows it up with the final game of the year and some of them were big catches seven catches 87 yards that 87 yards was the most he had had since the 100 yard game so like he so, has the freak out with Allen on the sidelines divisional round 2022 wonder all off season long if it's going to be a problem Sean McDermott says as he sends him home first day of either training camp or mini camp yeah home so send him home right 
Sean McDermott says in the press conference, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. I mean, it is, it is a pretty big deal. Then the next day, they're looking around at each other like, I mean, you guys are making a big deal about nothing. Like, yeah, they a, tried to No, you it. said it was a big deal. Try to downplay it. Um, I, I remember Josh Allen trying to take it on himself, saying it's my job. It's my job. I got to make sure, sure he's cool. Making sure everybody's good. No, that's not your job. Okay. <laughs> your well, job is to play quarterback. Your job is to get guys in the flow of the game, right? No, if you need to throw the ball to digs in the first series yeah. or two to, you know, get them into the flow of the game. Sure. You got to know the guys that you have in that room. And I understand what he's saying. It's his job to be a leader and to control everything. And that's what the quarterback, I, I appreciate him doing that, but there was clearly a bigger issue. Going there was on clearly there. a situation. Yeah. There was clearly a riff. There was clearly some problems going on. And now we get validated for that suspicion with him getting shipped off for a second round pick. And uh, the bills are also giving a fifth rounder in 2025 and a sixth this year. Okay. Along with Stefan Diggs to get a second round oh, pick so in giving, 2025. They're giving up two picks as well. Mid round picks, fifth and six. Yeah. They're but, giving up two late to mid round wow. picks Wow, so to get be- a second round pick in 2025. For a guy who yeah. is still considered one of the better receivers in the NFL. And I think when you're on Houston's end, you got to say, this is a good shot to take. You say, thank you very much. We're giving up one, you know, one second round pick. We're getting a couple late ones back and we're taking a shot that we can get a very rejuvenated, refreshed, dynamic weapon for our young quarterback here. And there's no better way to show commitment to CJ Stroud, right, Billy? Not we at had this great year. We're excited. Awesome. We're going to invest in you more. Here's a new toy for you who's have, you know, has equity and cash in this league, whether or not he's, like you said, getting older, peak is past. We don't know, but as a, if he's motivated and refreshed, he might be playing a lot better. Like that's the other thing about dig. So I think it's going to be really interesting to watch. I think something that could really work out well for the Houston Texans, at least in the short term, at least in the short term, because we don't know how much time it's going to take for him to get unhappy again and to start annoying people. If we assume that's what digs does. Right. But in the short term, I think this is a, you know, you got to be excited if you're a Houston Texans fan. In 2020, he led the league in catches with 127 oh, yeah. and led the league in yards with 1535. Oh, yeah, he's produced and he's produced, de- you know, important, deep, dynamic plays, you know, big plays, which are very important in this league. You know, making big plays, uh, th- those jackpot hits, those touchdown, deep touchdown mm-hmm. passes, going downfield. That's, you know, a lot of analytics. People say that's the difference in winning in this league. So far from the uh, yeah. Thanksgiving Day clip of Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs looking at each other and saying how thankful they were for each other. Yeah, far from that. We a little might, different from that. Well, we'll maybe we'll get them sitting down on a podcast in 15 years and talking or something like that. I don't know. I don't know story. if they will or not. Now, well, Stefan Diggs when did. The, when guys become old heads, you know, they always start to soften up. So, yeah. Change ahead. up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. You you become a little bit I'm just softer saying, in your old age. We'll get the story one day, probably. Potential yeah. out after this year. The Texans could get out of it with zero dead cap money next year. $18.5 million of dead cap money that the Buffalo bills are paying for Stefan Diggs to be out of the door. They didn't wait wait another year. They really wanted him out. Didn't they? They didn't wait another year for there to be zero dead cap money on three years, $67 million paid of his contract. That was a four year, $96 million deal. I just, it it is a fascinating situation. Very, very. It is clear. They wanted him done. They wanted him gone and they were, they were going to get out of the Stefan Diggs business. Roger and Franklin says peak has passed. No, I think he's making fun of me. Cause I said, instead of past his peak, I said peak has passed. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. I Roger. I misspoke there. No, apologies. but I mean like, but I yeah. think that's the question. Do you right. believe all of his best production is past him? Or do you believe that you could still see a highly productive player in 2024? Cause if you could, and this is the, this is the investment Armin. Yeah. And I got two seconds and two thirds. I would have been interested in this. I, I think so too. I would have been interested in this if I'm Brian Gutekunst. And you got to worry. I understand you got to worry about vibes and all that stuff. And maybe no that doubt about it. Wor- a thing to worry about, but it's a tantalizing thing, at least from the outside looking in, just at production, what he can do in the all field. the production, one year situation. I know you got a lot of young wide receivers that you're really into. I love wonder, the threat of. I'm always wondering these situations if teams knew he was in the market, you know? I, I, they would assume, you'd assume everyone's making calls, or if you're trying to trade somebody, you're calling around the league to get the best price. Right. 
However, never know. That's yeah. not what David Stern said when they traded uh, Josh Hader. Yeah. He said, I wasn't making calls about Josh Hader. Right. They called me. They called me. They yeah. gave me an offer that I felt I couldn't refuse, and we had to do it. So do you know if you get the best deal if you don't shop him sure, around? Sure. Or is it too dangerous to? It's right. Tough. Like, and this is where I love Drew Holiday, and we kind of went back and forth with this. I listened to more and more of his conversation with Draymond Green, where he's like, I I, I would have liked a little heads up. However, that's not necessarily the business of you talking to a star player. Yeah. Say, hey, man, just so you know, heads up. Looks like we might be trading you. And then you don't get traded. It blows up even worse. I think this, this appears to be a group that knew Stephon Diggs has played his last game for the Buffalo Bills when he walked off the field against Kansas City. Sure, sure, yeah. In his last moment as Buffalo Bill, just go back and watch that game against the Chiefs. That deep ball that Josh Allen throws 60-some yards in the air. And goes right through. He missed that. Stephon Diggs' hands. Oh, yeah. I remember that play. He totally missed it. Yeah. Right through Diggs' hands. That's a good point. Could have been a 70, 80 yard touchdown. Put them up in that game with three minutes to go. And you're not talking about a repeat NFL Super Bowl champion yeah. in the Kansas City Chiefs. That's how close the margin was, right? That's how close it is in this league. That's why we love it. And that's how close you are to living or dying, winning or losing, cashing a ticket or ripping it up. And we only cash tickets on this segment. A lot of people probably betting Houston Texans props now and Maybe. futures over at Potawatomi Hotel and Casino Sportsbook. Armin. Curious to know how quick if those numbers are already moving. I haven't got a chance to look at that yet, but I bet they would be. And uh, yeah, Potawatomi Sportsbook. The it's place to go and invest to every single day. Great. Fantastic. Maybe I'll make a trip down there this week. I'm thinking I will. You know, Lara's gone for a few days. I got a little extra time. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe the snow doesn't become too you bad. You got a little Viking weekend going on here, huh? Yeah, Viking couple days. She's back Friday, but quick work trip for her. So, oh, so she is back Friday. So she's yeah, not Friday night pulling the trigger and going to Phoenix. Yeah, it's not going to happen. She it'd be too tough for a turnaround, and she's just not going to do it. We're going to watch it home on Sunday, Saturday, which is fine. Okay, that's good. Okay, what she gonna do? Go alone? Because I'm not going. I'm not paying to go. We already went to Indianapolis. She could have went alone. Oh, I don't Mr. care. Mr. Debbie Downer over yeah, here. I'll, I'll, if she wants stories of it, I'll let her tell you. Because I said, look, you know they're going to win on Saturday, Laura. I'm not trying to jinx anything, but they're going to be at NC State Saturday. So that mean, you, means you have to commit to Tuesday because Monday night's a championship game, and you ain't going to miss that. Yeah, you're not flying home so, if you're out there for the championship. You got game. two tickets. You got more nights a hotel. You have, just, you know, just do you want to do it? It's I left it up to her, of course. Wow. Oh, so no, you no, just no. put all the bad things no. in front of her. No, Not the idea of, I mean, just think, Laura. Monday night, we be sitting there at State Farm Stadium wow. watching Danny Hurley wow. and the Yukon Huskies walk off the floor miserable. Yeah. And your Purdue Boilermakers celebrating first national championship. Mm. Or she might pay hundreds of dollars to watch Yukon win by 20. So you have to think of two options, two different situations. Well, damn, yeah, that could happen. No, I, I yeah, that listen, could happen. I said yeah. if she wanted to go, she could have, but I just didn't think she'd want. Oh, that's to nice of you to give her permission. No, it's not about permission. That's really nice of you to give I'm her making, that permission. I'm making the point that it's not up to me anyway. <laughs> but I wasn't gonna go. I wasn't so gonna do it. Ask I wasn't gonna do it. So quit at. We just went to Indianapolis. I what do you think I am? Made of fun? Well, I don't want to. I was just at opening day yesterday. Nah, I, just, I don't have this kind of time. Sorry, no, go I, ahead. I, I, I apologize. I, no, I interrupted you. No, you're you're, I just said, do what you want, Laura. I don't. I don't care. I don't want to go. I'm gonna go to, gonna go to Arizona because my my team lost. All right, so that's why I'm a little salty about it. Dang right. Let that salt <laughs> simmer a little bit for crying out loud. Let happy. it out. You know, it's possible if Marquette would have won, they would have played Purdue in this round. Then I think that situation, we got to go. Oh, okay. So if your team was in it, then you would have went. No, both Not of, just to support her team. Of, both of our teams were in it. If both of our teams were in it, Billy. If your team, team was first. in it, she would have she would have went with you. She didn't I'm tell just me. Saying, I'm just letting you know It that. wasn't she's like, Arvin, I want to go to Arizona. I was like, go ahead. I don't care. She, no, she's already was going to Dallas this week. So it wasn't going to happen probably. Wasn't going to happen. Wasn't what will happen, happen is I was walking up to the cashier I window. Dub. I got another dub yesterday. And cash in Armin's yeah, win. We cash another ticket for Coons Can't Miss. I'm already 2-0 and this week. I'm feeling great about Stud. myself. You should be. I'm going for a 5 I'm letting you know right now, Billy, I'm going for a 5-0 and week. I want John to know when he comes back that we brought his baby back 5-0. and Damn. When was the last time there was a 5-0 and week in this in this segment? I mean, John has had a couple streaks uh, at that point, but I'd have to go back, but... 
I don't. I know, haven't man. been on maybe, the program since. Maybe it's Armin's can't miss. I don't even know. Maybe I shouldn't be jinxing myself right now. Yeah, maybe you should get a winning but, week dialed in first. first. Yeah, lock in the third victory so there's no way that you're under 500 when right, you hand it in. Right before you start talking stuff. But I'm all about the confidence. So let me Feels hear the good. Coons can't miss. I love uh, that. We had the Brewers money line yesterday. That one won. Now, how many people, if you walk down the streets right now, if you walk down Wisconsin Avenue, how many people could tell you who the Brewers starting pitcher is today? Uh, not many. Not many. Joe Ross, right? Now, I don't know that many would know the Brewers starter today if he walked up to them Joe on Ross. the street. Now, I'm not saying he can't go out there and have a great start and keep these vibes going. I'm not saying Chris Paddock might be tough for the Brewers at all. I don't mm -hmm. know much about Chris Paddock either. Got all his albums. But yeah. I know one thing is I'm betting the over today on this game. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. And I'm not sure. I'm not saying I want Joe Ross to give up runs. I'm just saying when I see Joe Ross and Chris Paddock starting and I see eight and a half, we're going over, Billy. It's over eight and a half today, Brewers twins. I think the Brewers will still win. I got them winning six three, Billy. Okay. So let's get over. Let's get a win. Let's get Brewers twins over eight and a half today. As they uh, take uh, take the field at American Family Field, that's what I'm talking about. Let's see Joe Ross outduel Chris Paddock for sure. you know each of them give up like four runs in five innings, and then it's a yeah bullpen game. It's a sprint to the finish. Brewers win late with maybe I don't know a two run shot from Willie Adamas or it's, something. That's the other thing I like about the um, the over now in baseball. It's kind of a weird thing to bet, but with the uh, with the extra inning rules with man on second. Mm -hmm. You know, you, there, there's a lot more chances for runs in extra innings. So let's say you get to extra innings and, and multiple runs, two multiple runs. Yeah, it's two, two or three, three. You have a lot better chance to get a late cover, a late good beat cover. If if you need three runs in extra innings that you ever would have had before. So we're all with it. We're rolling with eight and a half over Brewers twins today. And we're the Brewers gonna go five and zero here. What, you we're rolling with here? it. Greg and Tosa went from at eleven sixteen. Great Brewers money line win. Armin yesterday. Thanks, Greg. Woo. Eleven twenty. Jinx. Well, maybe he's the jinx. Just maybe said, are you serious, dude? I just gave you some dubs. I just gave you some credit, and now you're gonna jinx it. Right. Tim and the Shaw though said that he's got the Brewers hitting double digits. 10, 11, 12 runs here today. I, I like that better. Brewers 14 to nothing uh, in the overall hit today. And and uh, Rich and Fondy, I see what you're tweeting. You know I see what you're tweeting. I was very happy for Lara. Extremely happy for Lara. To the point where I said, you're going to buy gear. What are you going to get? This is a great moment. I was in the moment with her. I said, I said, you know, before bed, I said, let's watch all the entire 30-minute Matt Painter post game. I want you to soak in every moment of this. The first time it happened, I see what you're sweet and rich. I, said, I can't wait for the day Arvin realizes he is last. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so mm. after his daughter and the dog arrive. Karma is real. Oh, a dog now. Yeah. Okay. What else is this? Hey, listen, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing, Rich. I told her she could go. If she wants. I'm just, I'm pride. It's really nice of you to give her permission. He said, it's up to her. I, it's up to you. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to fly? Is this I mean, really what you want to do? I mean, her dad, I think her flight uh, Friday night's like at 1130. So you want to go turn it around right in the next morning? Is that what you want to do? Or do you have to find Dallas to Phoenix? Which I'm sure is an easy flight. Probably an easier flight. Yeah, <laughs> probably an easier flight to find. Probably not that difficult. Well, you know, we'll see. Maybe in the next 72 hours, she'll change her mind. I hope she does. I want her to be at the Final Four. She seems so genuinely excited. So fired up. So fired up, dude. I she want her so to I want up. her to enjoy that. I yeah. want her to be in that arena. And I would like you to go with and support. However, I... I'm not going to make you incentivize you to do anything. I tell you, I just don't see it happening. It's not that I don't want to be there or she doesn't want to be there, but we're not, you know, I don't think we're Marlins man all of a sudden taking a trip all across. The That's country fair. Okay. To just travel and follow our teams. You know, I just don't think we're doing that, but Hey, Hey, just, but who knows? Maybe yeah, we who are. Knows, maybe. Who knows? Maybe we are. Yeah. That's Armin Sarian, Armin Jazz Hand Sarian here today. Real wide open Wednesday Jazz Hands sure. edition of Armin Sarian today, which I am a huge fan of. More importantly, let's be honest, everyone's playing a little hurt today. I think everyone's everyone's playing, playing a little hurt today. Armin Sarian was uh, was buzzing yesterday. Was, was enjoying the barrel yard yesterday. Well, I, I was after that second Jello shot in the parking lot, or what was that shot? Cookie dough whiskey, and then you had another one. I did. And then I had a couple of beers and stuff and it was, I, you know, I don't it get was out sorry of, and shot a clock I, yesterday. I, I don't, I, yeah. And I don't get out of my element that often. That's what I'm talking about, man, dude. but I did, at least I didn't 
I'm not going to make that joke. It's too soon. Not going to make that joke. Okay. I think we're time for a break here. Yeah. You bite that tongue. Hey, we're playing hurt, but we're not dumb. Still ain't stupid. So quit asking. He's Arvin Sorry, and I'm Billy Schmidt. We're back after this on 9 to noon. <laughs>
Which one? Pick one. This one. Classic. Nine to noon. I really wish Armin would have had the YouTube stream up when you just wrap that into the camera. That was elite. Expressway, hair back, weaving through the trap. This was a banger. That's what I'm talking so about. Eve, okay. Eve went hard, man. I'm telling you, you got you teach your kids about the golden era of hip hop. Yeah. Let me tell you. you got to teach these kids. You teach know, we got to teach these kids What's these that? days. What's that? To go to opening day for crying out loud. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we, they were there. I mean, there was a full house, I guess. It just seemed like there were some, you know, you mean kids? Oh, you mean the kids? Well, okay. Mean, well, let me let me okay. let me clarify. When I mean kids, I mean like the fourteen to twenty year olds. Oh, you want the you want the like the young like the teenagers. I want the, the teen to young adults because that was when we like we, that was the heyday of saying, "Bro, there's no way I'm missing this game. We gotta go." I'm this going. is like senior skip day or whatever you find in a way. Everybody, talk to your mom. See if you can write yeah. you a note. We all wanted to be there for that party, you know. I just don't know that that's. I don't know that that's exactly top of mind. Maybe generationally, this thing is changing. Like our kids there to a lot of times it was, you know, this might be our chance to get to, to right. get a yeah. beer, to get a beer yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Touch something with some ABV. Yeah, you never know. I mean, that was where the party was at, you know, so the cool kids were. Senior skipped it. I mean, you want to talk about ABV, Bacardi and Mountain Dew. That was an interesting concoction. But like, I'm just, there's, there's day in and day out at day games for AmFam Field. You'll see. All different types of people, all different walks of life, all different age groups. I just became very accustomed to opening day being littered with the youngins who would be, you know, gallivanting around Summerfest, part, I guess the, is the, the one that the, I think the, of. The young party crowd, the Summerfest crowd. Okay. I get then that. again, as Drew Olson and, and us were talking about yesterday when Drew sat in with us from the Drew and KB show, he said like Summerfest isn't the same necessarily. So maybe that part of it is just a generational gap. However, there is still hope. You know why? Why is that? Guys like Matt Jr. on our talking text line. Okay, let's go. Let's go. My eight-year-old son, Aaron, went to his first opening day yesterday, and I totally had a moment where I felt like he was good luck. Christian Yelich comes up to bat. He goes, oh, Dad, I've heard you talk about this guy before. Is he your favorite brewer? I looked at him and said, yeah, you could say that, but... And he's about to hit a home run for you oh my right gosh. now. Oh my gosh, did it happen? He was like, really? Almost like he knew I couldn't predict the future. And on the next pitch, he <sighs> smacks a 423-foot home run to center field. The look of awe and surprise and excitement on his face was awesome. I oh. looked over at him as the fireworks went off. He was in absolute heaven. Hopefully a lifelong baseball fan now. Matt. Oh my goodness, that is wow. so cool. That is just so awesome. That Think in of that all moment, the moments that you thought your dad was an absolute superhero. Right. And, he, and, and then she said, this guy's going to do it. And then the guy actually did it. Next pitch. And you, you're, you're, you're that age. You're in amazement that your dad knew it. And that the dude actually did it. And that you saw you're the best player at a home run. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. That's On your first me- opening never, day. That's a memory. You will never, ever forget. You'll never dude. forget it. He might be on this station. That's so cool. One day as he gets older, you Hopefully might be he takes our job do, doing this saying, Hey, let me tell you the, the story. I always remember about opening day when yellow to the home run, my dad predicted it and it happened. That is cool, dude. That is awesome. So cool. Thank you for sharing that story, Matt, because there really is. There are times in your life where you think your your pops is an absolute superhero. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. That little man, Aaron, is going to school today saying, my dad said they were going to hit a home run, and they did. Yeah. And they did. My dad It was nuts. He knew exactly. They told him that he was going to hit a home run. Sure. I mean, that is really, really cool to be able to see. And more importantly, just the atmosphere around AmFam, there is something you don't necessarily forget your first time walking into a massive stadium, right? You don't oh, sure. first time you remember seeing all the lights and the green grass yeah. and the pageantry opening day is a little bit different because all of that is on full display. Now he's hooked into it. I love that. Oh, it, he's, yeah. Hook line and center. I, I, you got him now. I, I remember as I, Paul Mahler had a walk off Homer when I was very, very, very young. I, I don't even know. I have to go look the game up. I always remember that moment, even though it's very fleeting. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's even, I remember other early Brewer games, but like it's, it was burned in my memory Two, I think two and one count or maybe one and two count Damn. down four two, walk off through on Homer. It's burned in my memory. And that's the type of, that's what sports is about though. 
mean, that's what making memories is all about. And that's, that's just so awesome. There's, there's one that always sticks in my mind too, of when, uh, I was there with a couple of, you know, my, my parents and uh, a couple other of our cousins, uncles had, as we mentioned earlier, yeah. you had to get a 10 pack to be able to get opening day that tickets, was, right? That's what it was. Yeah. So it was a 10 pack. We had, uh, we were enjoying the game. They were playing the Rockies at one late Friday night dips into the 12th inning. Everyone's like, all right, let's get on outside. We'll listen to Euchre for the sure. rest of the game. As we walk on in, we hear the crowd blowing on up. We're outside the stadium. Two of the cousins, though, we're going back in. Billy, come with us. All right, dude, I'm running back on in. I know that I'm breaking the rules. I was already outside the stadium <laughs> running right back in. The ushers are like, oh, you guys shouldn't have left. Run right back in, sit down 10 rows away, and Prince Fielder hits one of the oh my gosh. mammoth walk-off homers in like the 14th inning, one of the so hardest awesome. hit balls I've ever seen in my entire life. And same deal. It's just etched in your memory. That one will be etched in stone for that young man. Yeah. That's, so that's awesome. what baseball's about, man. Man, Prince would hit it hard. When he when Prince would hit one real hard, he'd be putting dents in chairs. Jeez. Putting dents in the wall. I mean, that's how hard sometimes those ropes were. You, you know, when, Nobody swung a baseball yeah. bat harder than Prince Fielder, I am fully convinced of. Eddie and Stalas calls BS. What is this, Angels in the outfield? I'm sorry, Eddie. You got Angel with you. I mean, that's what the magic of sports is sometimes. I love the Angels in the outfield reference. Ken in the Falls, yeah. We wish you were here, too. Ken we in the wish Falls, you were there, man. He was the king of FOMO yesterday. Ken in the Falls. Yeah, he was hitting it quite a bit. Did not go to opening day, and he regrets it. He said, I wish I was there. I couldn't be there. He already sent this picture in from 2019 with Yelich. He's got that picture I've seen a million times. It's like me with the Dwayne Wade picture when I was a, when I was a freshman at Marquette. How many times have I put that thing on Twitter? I've seen Ken's picture with Christian Yelich at least 30 times. Yeah, this was me. But it and, never gets old, does Yelich it? In 2019. Never gets old. Never gets old. A little bit of breaking news, by the way, Billy. I have uh -oh. to get in before I forget here. Um, looks like Marquette women, uh, Marquette women's head coach, Megan Duffy, is taking the job at Virginia Tech. So Marquette women are looking for a new head coach. You guys coach. are losing another one another to Virginia one. Tech? Another one to Virginia Tech. What is up with this Virginia Tech don't pipeline? Know. Don't know. I don't know. Maybe they have more cash. Is Blacksburg, Virginia, a better place to live than Milwaukee? Apparently, everybody wants to live in Blacksburg, Virginia. I don't get it. All I know is... You know, are there a lot of maybe ROTC ACC, people maybe. signing up to play college basketball? Like, is that like a recruiting <laughs> trip or is that no helping idea. you or, uh, you know, Marquette's a little having a little trouble keeping a women's head here. Carolyn Keeger was an alum, went to Penn state. Mm -hmm. Megan Duffy has had some success since she uh, came on board. Now going to Virginia Tech, so Marquette women are looking for a new head coach. I don't know. It's a little. I'm, she bringing I, in too many JUCOs. I don't know. Players or Megan, what? Liz Carlin and, and is in the portal, I think, and another women's player. So Marquette's going to be rebuilding there. But maybe the ACC is just a better conference than women's basketball. That could be part of it. Not. I really have sure. something to do with it. Yeah, no doubt about it. All I know is my buddy texted me. He said we lost another one to Virginia Tech, and I almost said I'm quitting. If Shaka's <laughs> going, I said Shaka I'm is going, not. I'm going, out of your guys. Uh, Shaka is not going to Virginia Tech. I said I, you know. I know you know you could have handled Michigan. Well, you know I was I would have been in my feelings, but I would have. You to get were over it. you were being uh, tormented that one morning. I was nervous, right? Two weeks ago, yeah. while we were at Rock and Brews before Western Kentucky Marquette tip off, because you were convinced Shaka Smart was going to be the Michigan Wolverines head coach. Yeah, I was just nervous about losing another one. You know, Dad doesn't want us again. You know that whole thing. Little but. did you know. Somebody else that was playing during right. that exact window right. Right. I would take it. that Michigan job. In Dusty May. Oh, that one, yes. Yeah, Dusty about May that? for sure. Yeah, it's crazy how that works out. I was pretty relieved when I saw that. But, okay, so. Okay, Roger and Franklin. Blacksburg is a beautiful place. I, again, I bet it, it is. Roger. I, I, I wow. bet it's an awesome wow. place. Roger's the geography and the I'm grammar sorry. police today. You can't tell me it's better than this. I I, I don't know what it is, I, but I, I just, I'm and, a little shocked. And I will have that hand raised in air. On a great, on a great uh, athletic department, a great situation like you have in Marquette, but you want to turn your back on it, that's fine. That's good luck to you. No, oh, they want to go Lane Stadium and do the you know, yeah run I'm on out and sure stand there while the football team trots on out sure there. Sure you're sure getting a lot of resources with that program. I'm sure you'll be getting a lot of them. Roger and Franklin, the geography and grammar police today, by the way. Appreciate that, Roger. <laughs> On one today, man. I'm Absolutely saying, you know, elite day here today. Marquette looking for a new women's head coach, though. So looking okay. for a new head coach. So if you're if you're out there, apply. Hey, you're not taking ours. All right. You're not taking Carol's head coach. Lindsey Schultz has done too good of a good fair job. Enough, fair enough. Bringing the pioneers from having six ladies on that damn team uh, when I was calling games to winning the conference tournament and going to the NCAA tournament. So you 
keep your hands out of Waukesha. I'll okay? tell those boys down in 12th of Wisconsin that, at the headquarters there. You can't get it. Lindsay Schultz off limits, all right? She's so quit limits, asking. So quit asking. Quit asking. 414-799-1973. We'll round third, head for home. We'll hand it off to Mike Keller in 20 minutes. We got to see Mike Keller yesterday. I got to see Mike Keller twice yesterday as he was living a little sweet life with me. Nine to noon on the game.
Not that you need an excuse to bump back with Snoop Dogg here on nine to noon because we love Snoop. Yeah, Armin, always. I think Snoop has made one of the most remarkable face turns. I shouldn't say one of the most remarkable face turn that I've ever seen. Oh, he definitely figured it out better than Diddy. I mean, Diddy went that way. He didn't go that way. That's now he's, true. he's like America's That's darling now. Yeah. It's just amazing how that works on every commercial. Hey, you know what? We need, we need somebody funny uh, for this commercial. Who should we get? What about Snoop doing cooking shows? He's doing voiceover. 10 years ago, planet. you yeah. wouldn't want to touch Snoop on a national commercial. Hey, he just wouldn't be that guy. My right? man smoked a blunt before walking out to do the halftime show and people praised him. Some, 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 That's some guys, legendary stuff. Some guys just do it, get it done right. Like some guys just figure it out. And some guys right. just have all the luck. And they, <laughs> think that's it. Well, I wish <laughs> my biggest reason why Snoop uh, is the bump back here is big Snoop Dogg fan. I get a notification from one of my favorite uh, apps that no free shout outs that I'm not endorsing yet. Would love to tick pick love tick pick. Um, I get a shout out that Snoop Dogg is starting a tour. Okay. Might go and see him. 11 events announced, Armin. Okay. At Scotia Bank Center in Halifax, NS. Could you tell me what NS stands for? Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. That's in Canada, correct? Yes, that's it. Uh, also in Quebec at Center Videotron. That would also be in Canada. In Montreal, Qu Quebec. Ontario. Ottawa. Toronto. Oh, cool. London, Ontario. Uh, Canada, Winnipeg. This is great, Billy. Saskatchewan. What, were you going? Edmonton. Were you going? Calgary, there? Vancouver. God bless you, Snoop. Were you going there? No, I'm not going to Canada. Well, I, I mean, why I not? I wasn't planning on going to Canada. Why not? So quit asking why I was. People ask me why I'm not going to Phoenix. Why aren't you going to Saskatchewan? Because I like America. Because I'm an American. It's not that I'm far. I'm going to travel to American cities. Jeez, I mean, it's not crying that, out loud not that far from here culturally or geographically. It doesn't mean you can't just just hop on a. On a I don't want to go on a passport. I don't want to have to go on a vacation that I need a passport to go see Snoop at a concert. So just I'd like to go to the rave and see him at a concert or if I serve for him. Well, I don't know exactly why I'm getting notifications for the concert tour opening across Canada. So that's what it is. Just be honest. You, you can't find your passport. Just be honest. You don't know where your passport is. Zero clue. <laughs> <laughs> no clue where my passport is. You just lost your passport. No clue where it is. And I still have it for, I think, two years. I would travel with my passport exclusively. Wouldn't even worry about it as my license because, especially when you're going to Vegas, Armin, there's an 87% chance you're losing your oh, wallet. Oh, yeah, you're right? losing everything. So I always bring my passport. Didn't okay. have it this last trip because I have no idea where Well, that's why I love the tacos and tequila last year, even though it got clowned right here in Franklin. Yeah. Why am I going to Canada to see Snoop Dogg if I can go to Franklin Field and see Ludacris, T.I., Chameleon Air, uh, Trick you. Daddy, Young Jock, Bubba Sparks? I don't care who you are. That's a good lineup. That's this year's lineup. We're going back, by the way, Laura and I. I would be too. Yeah. Well, it might be tough this year. I mean. Well, that's true. That's right be, in time when the baby's coming. She will be like in. 38 weeks pregnant, but whatever, you know. They're probably not the best spot. for. But, I mean, you could go. Well, she can drive me, DD. I mean, she's not. I'd she's love for you to ask that one. <laughs> hey, you're going to DD today, right? I just, Snoop, I love you. I know that they've been uh, endorsing blowing trees up in Canada for a long time. Maybe that's why he's going to Canada. I mean, they do have a leaf on their flag. He's just supporting somebody that supports uh, a Snoop in endeavor. But I'm sure. just I'm like, what the? Okay, yeah, maybe I'll start checking up some flights to Ontario. Don't want to go to Ottawa, but maybe I'm supposed to. Maybe that's exactly what this summer Speak. I'm missing on my itinerary. And speaking of flights, we might as well make this the text of the day. It's about to be, yeah. Um, Napa Greg, Armin, if you don't want to go with Laura, I'll go because I want all this crappy weather. You can stay here and grab through with my wife and console her because I told her that uh, I'm not reading all this. Yeah, don't read this is all weird. that. So I'm kidding, but I would love to if you're not going. It's not like there's a plane seat that's already there going unfilled. So there's not Greg, a seat that Armin's not I don't using. Think, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Napa Greg, and say, I just don't see it happening where I'm just going to say, yeah, you know what? If you want to just go Why don't with you Laura, go with my wife instead of I, me? I don't think that's what's going on, Napa Greg. <laughs> we love you, buddy, but yeah, that's not that's not how this is going to work. It's not like there's an unseat, oh. uh, unfilled like plane seat that where you just to hop on and just hang out with my wife for a week. You know, that's a category though. What Napa Greg is uh, explaining to you, I mean, like that's a that's a category that some people are very wow. interested in. 
I don't know. That's our quick trip takeaway of the day. Brought to you by Quick Trip. Need something for dinner tonight? Don't cook. Stop by your local Quick Trip. Need some. Pick up a freshly prepared, absolutely delicious takeout meal. Maybe some snacks for your plate. You might even find. I will say one thing. There's no maybe better... not the exact last line that I said before it, but close enough. I will say one thing. There is no better place to get snacks for any kind of trip than Quick Trip. Never. And this is a hundred percent serious. So I love yes. to, I love to see that. Now I'm I'm also gonna give you um Sorry, go ahead. We got the crosstalk too. All yeah, right, we do. All right. I'm gonna also I'm gonna give one prediction because I wanna just in case I'm right, I have a prediction. I wanna see if I can get this right. Mm-hmm. So if I am right, I can say I told you first. Megan Duffy leaving Marquette women's head uh, coaching job. Yes. My prediction is Scott Merritt. All former, right. Former Marquette. Uh, final four. Final alone. four players. Been coaching women's for a while. Was an assistant for Carolyn Keeger at Marquette. Was an assistant in Illinois. Associate head coach at Wisconsin. I think he's a head coach at Gardner Webb right now. Sweet. It's my prediction. My prediction is that Marquette's going for going to go for an alum. Going to go for Scott Merritt here. Okay? Come on, Scott Merritt. Let's, see, let's, let's bring see. him on home. Let's see if it can happen. Why not? He worked and at it, Wisconsin and Marquette. Yeah, and if it doesn't happen, doesn't happen. If it does happen, I can feel real smart. Well, so. listen, we're going to hang a banner when they hire Scott Merritt as the next women's basketball coach at Marquette. And on the other side of this timeout, we're going to hand it off to Mike Heller of the Mike Heller Show and Nick Bruzowitz, who is also going to be there. He was not at the game yesterday. But he's got some statements about potentially the game, and he's going to be flanking Mike Heller for the entire three hours. Cannot wait for that conversation. It comes up next. It's been 9 to noon. Thanks to all that watched us on YouTube, all that watched us on X. Listen to us on the iHeartRadio app. Listen along across the state. I am not going to be on the radio program Thursday or Friday for the entirety of the show. I'll be departing for Phoenix coming up later on this afternoon. I will be joining the boys at some particular point in time, both days. You make sure that you're better tomorrow, Armin. I'll do All my right? best. I will make try. sure we're better tomorrow and hold up the, this spot. It's me and boss man. So I got to be good tomorrow. Everyone's going to be on yeah. the best behavior. Yeah. The boss is I'm, in- I'm wearing, I might wear a tie like Hunter. You're going to bust out a hunter, <laughs> bust out a hunter tie. Make sure that thing's appropriate length. The boss is in here tomorrow, so they will absolutely be better. Nine to noon on the game.